very relaxed. It's not news yeah. related. It's just, it's just very chill. I just don't understand why these headphones are not working. In through there. Hello everyone, it's G from the F Word here with another special deep dive episode. Now, I've done a deep dive with my brother, Vass. I've done a deep dive with Anthony. No, oh, sorry. Nick. I've done a deep dive with Nick, but I have not done a deep dive with Anthony yet, and uh, it's about time we did. You know, kind of like, I was thinking about it, it's kind of funny, like you think the order would be like the opposite in a way, like it's yeah. just timeline wise. Yeah, but our, our timeline, very much like the Terminator one, is just all over the place. It's fucked. Yeah, it is fucked. Yeah. And mostly because I had to do those those original deep dives were uh, because they were in lieu of the mm-hmm. main show. And I mean, this is in lieu of the main show because I'll be away this weekend. But now that they like when they picked up steam, it was kind of like a thing to have in my mm-hmm. back pocket. Ideally, I'd like to have like seven or eight of them just in the back oh, and then okay. when I need Just them I can toss to them go. because the thing is they're not really dependent on anything timeline yeah, no. like you know when we do our show the reason we're not doing it this week which we could have brought Vass in here and just did a regular show but then there's probably going to be something coming out Thursday and Friday and potentially Saturday morning mm-hmm. that could either debunk everything we've talked about or just really just throw it for a loop there's also like nothing to talk about like nothing big that's kind of like we yeah, there's some to discuss and stuff. And yeah, it's just kind of like whatever. Like no one really cares. Yeah. So uh, as you all know, the F Word Podcast is a proud affiliate of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network, and that is sponsored by Connexus Credit Union. You can go to Connexus. What is it? It's ConnexusMoneyTalk.ca, and uh, you can also go hashtag Money Talk, uh, the Connexus Money Talk blog. Or the Connexus hashtag Money Talk blog, which will provide you with expert advice, tips, and solutions for all life stages and events. And one of them is saying, "Getting married. I'm going to a wedding this weekend. Mm. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. It'll be fun. How's your homework? Stupid. Like That's I was doing econ and just like such a grind because I'm like three chapters behind now. Because mm-hmm. we like kind of go over a chapter each class. I'm just doing these mastery points, and it's just kind of like, I don't know. It's literally just a grind. That's it. It's just it's just so fucking boring. Everything else, like stats, like I had a quiz for stats today, and he uploaded that answer sheet onto like the classroom, and I like looked at it, and like everything looked pretty. Like I got like at least an eighty, I would say, on the quiz, which is like for math, I fucking suck at it. So mm. that's like much better than I was expecting, because at the end of the quiz, I was like, I either did really good, or I fucking bombed it, because it was just way too easy. And like I either like did this perfectly, or I just did it so wrong in so many ways. But then I, yeah, I think I did good. So. Well, the, the key is to find out who are the smartest kids in the class, mm-hmm. and if you, the, it's always works. If you finish before them, the chances are you screwed up big time. I know everyone's like everyone was freaking out though. Like I was talking to smart kids that like, were like good at math, and they're like, "I have no idea what's going on." Like I'm stressed. I'm like, "Oh, this is no fucking help." Like, but they were smart from high school, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I found they had like a 96 average. So I feel like you yeah. know it would like somewhat carry over. Well, a lot of it I found is structure too. Mm-hmm. So my first year, and I only did one year, so mm-hmm. if in my in my mind if you get through your first year and you go to all your finals which i didn't do Mm. uh then you've you're like you know you surpass me so you're very close to surpassing me educationally education wise um but yeah the structure was not as handholdy as high school was Mm -hmm. and for someone that's not really looking at least at the time wasn't looking to be educated on anything like Mm -hmm. i didn't care for education as much as as i do now like i'm actually reading a book on astrophysics right now and it's Hmm. unbelievable um and so the fact that it lacks structure you'd think that that would open me up but if i never because i didn't have that educational foundation where i wanted to learn Mm -hmm. it was harder for me at university because i didn't know what the hell was going on like i didn't know what I needed to know versus what I should know, what's going to be when, when the Mm -hmm. exams are, when everything is. And it was a cross between, and you probably have this even more so, what's in the class and what's online Mm -hmm. and how those coincide, right? Yeah, for anthropology, that's kind of like the thing for in class. Like, it doesn't really fucking matter. Like, I just, like, zone out in there pretty much because they have, like, a slideshow you can just go and look at online. Mm -hmm. But for econ, it's kind of like, you just don't know, like, what the fuck to, like, 
it seems like everything's important and you have to read everything. It's kind of like, there's no way it's like this much information. But my midterm, we don't have a test. So just a midterm coming up in October. So it's like, I'll find out then. What's really interesting is, uh, especially when you mention econ, I've got five econ books. Mm-hmm. Like not from university. I've gone out and mm-hmm. bought like Economics 101. I bought this breakdown of economics. Uh, I would highly recommend you read Freakonomics. I'll lend you the first one. Uh, and I got that one and think like a freak and I'm going through super freak economics, but I would highly recommend you read those ones because a, they're outstanding mm-hmm. books and they're sarcastically and, and, uh, comedically written. Okay. That's good. But Always good. Like econ's actually a lot more interesting than it is. Like it's an interesting class. It's I just didn't like, take the class either. Oh, and no. for some reason now I'm like, I've been on this kick for like three years of learning about mm-hmm. economics. You know, I like it. It's a, like, I think he's my favorite professor just because he's like just the most like entertaining he's like actually like alive he's not just like whatever just like hates his life yeah. like all my other professors pretty much but yeah i don't know just kind of adjusting to it are any of you any of your buddies adjusting to it this like are you guys in the kind of in the same pace do you have a lot of friends that are in it with you uh like for me like when i'm in school like usually i don't really like talk to people like on weekdays like on weekends like i'll be more sociable but like i know one friend yesterday is planning like he's not planning to like finish university so I don't know. I told him like, well, why are you even like here then? Like, if you like, because he wants to do something in business related, and you don't need to have a degree in business to be successful. As yeah, as not a good anymore. Idea. But like, there, there's just, a huge paradigm shift mm-hmm. in a lot of the markets for that reason. Yeah. But yeah, he's just like he bet money that I would drop out of university before he did. I'm like, I can't. It's not even a fucking option to drop out of university. And B, I wouldn't mm-hmm. do it anyway because I just, I don't know. I just don't quit at things usually. But you should bet him. Just so he stays in university and goes the full ride. Well, we bet ten bucks who would drop out first. Oh man, I said it that's my... like nothing. That's not even. Yeah, that's not even a, a hangnail in the well, game. Well, the two unemployed guys. Yeah, fair enough. But I am, I am employed. I'm going to Landmark. You are going to yes. Landmark. Oh. Well, EB Games was like again, like they, re- I was, they impressed them, but they weren't like ready to hire me yet because they wanted to like get more people interviewed. And I just said, okay, mm-hmm. well, like I got a week to go to Landmark. That's too late. I'll just go there. And really, the commute's not that bad. Like for no, those of you who bypass? live in Regina, I mean, it's not terrible. It is now because the ring roads, yeah, fucked, and construction. But, um, once you get, once you get past, like, always take that Assiniboia mm-hmm. thing, and then get onto Arcola, and then go the back end from Arcola. Just avoid Vic mm-hmm. as much as you can. But I think once someone said once the bypass is made, it's literally like straight from my house, straight that location in like five yeah. minutes. Yeah, even when I go to White City, mm-hmm. um, which isn't a long time, but when you take Victoria Avenue, it's actually. It's a like lot longer. I think I DD'd someone. It was like half an hour to drive yeah. out there. So from Arcola, there's actually a back road that they've opened up from a while ago. And when I was in real estate and I had to show houses out there, mm-hmm. it was close to my office. And so you take this back road and it'd take you directly to like that Western Pizza, Tim Hortons okay. area. And so you'd you'd avoid everything. And it was great. The only shitty thing is if you were stuck with like a semi or something. Mm-hmm. And that would give you a pain in the ass. But the reason I ask about university and friends is because like when I went, uh, I think I took a year off. I'm pretty sure I took a year off. And then I went, mm-hmm. or I went right away. Anyways, it was me, uh, Robert, who I mentioned on the podcast before. He's actually coming on. We're going to do a deep dive, okay. which is going to be sweet. Uh, Sean Hoff, and I don't think my I don't think my friend Shane was on was in there that year. But there was at least a few of us going. But we had all taken different classes. Like they took sociology. I could care less for sociology. Mm-hmm. I took psych. They also took psych with me. I took stats. I, uh, obviously math. 100 or 101 yeah, or whatever. One and then English. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It turns out I'm like really terrible at a lot of these things because my like foundation was brutal. But going with friends at least, yeah, no, I don't know, like... you helped. And Nick helped me my first day of school. Hmm. So I had no idea where to go. Oh, yeah, and no, so I called fun. Nick. Nick, le- this is how much of a mensch Nick is. He left his restaurant just before lunch when it's his busy time when like mm-hmm. he was working. And like for those of you who may not know, Nick ran a restaurant for 19 years and he like owner, operator, and he did the whole thing. Mm-hmm. He left to come to the university to show me where my classes were because I was too stupid to find where my class was. That's a was. decent like way away. It's not like close. It's like 10 minutes, I'd say, or at least. It, but it's a pain to find parking there and then mm-hmm. to find where it is. Luckily, he knows where everything yeah, is, but still the whole ordeal. No, so, it's yeah. Big as fuck. I think I'm like, I have a route, like a route. Yeah. Like, so I know how to get to classes, but like past that, like I'm like lost. I haven't, I know for a fact I haven't gone to like a lot of places in the universe, like Campion. Yeah. I don't think I've gone to. There's this one building I have to go to for a like meeting with my anthropology assistant, like five minute meeting, and I have okay. no idea where it is, but I'll find it probably. I had, uh, well, I already talked about my psychology teacher who was, who mysteriously vanished halfway through. And then my, my math 100 teacher 
was this uh, gentleman from Portugal. And he had just, like, he must have been here for a couple of years because he was very soft spoken and his mm-hmm. accent was thick, like thicker mm-hmm. than my parents. Okay. That and is so thick. there was so much we just, all of us couldn't understand because mm-hmm. obviously you get to know people in your class and everything like that. Couldn't fucking understand a thing he was saying. It was such a hard. Luckily, the TA was awesome. Mm. And so she was able to like fill us in on a lot of the stuff that we may have missed. And that's what you got to do, man. Get in with the TAs. I think so. Not that in though. No, I don't know. We'll see. You know, we'll be, see how we'll see how well I can do. You gotta be careful. But the reason you're here, aside from this, this deep dive, is that you, I guess you and I are the godfathers of this F word podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say you are like. Have you ever seen the Ocean's movies, like Ocean's Eleven and stuff? No. Oh, for those of you who have, you are like the George Clooney character that brings the team together, mm-hmm. or like that's kind of starts a thing. And I'm like Brad Pitt's character, Rusty, that executes. I, would, I always thought of it like I was Vince McMahon, and you were like Triple H. So I was just like the main, like not the main guy, but like just a mm-hmm. guy who like made it, and then you just do all like the fucking like actual work for the F mm-hmm. for, for the, the F, F word. word. Yeah. Well, that's the only thing that survived the F family. That's true. Yeah, which is super interesting. So if you dial back. When did we start this again? When did Spider-Man Homecoming come out? 2017? It was June 2017. So we started like a week before that, maybe two weeks before that. I think we had two episodes. We reviewed Bumble... Or no, we reviewed the fifth Transformers movie, I think, on the first one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then we did... uh, That's back when it was like structured, where it's like, Mm -hmm. okay, now we're going on to the gaming section. Video game, WWE. And then we had the WWF word, which I still think should be a thing. It's a nice logo. It's too nice a logo to go to waste. It's too nice of a name to Mm -hmm. just give up. Like, I'm still keeping that which I think like the WWF word should still be a thing where you and Nick can record it Mm -hmm. and then release it on Wednesdays. And so we'll be releasing like two podcasts a week, which I'm totally fine with because I think it would just be really Mm -hmm. good. Um, Unfortunately, Nick's like knee deep in diapers right now. So there's not much like going on in the wrestling world right now anyway. Like soon, I think 2020 would be like a good year. I think like I just think it's going to be actually like promising year. But like right now it's kind of dead. Yeah, and then like in that first episode, we also had Bo. I want to get him back on to talk. Video I have no games. idea where Bo is. You haven't seen him at all, hey? No, like I have no idea where to like how to like this guy sucks at like just in general like, from like last communicating. time. Communicating, yeah, communicating. He's an awful communicator. A great guy. I love Bo, but he's just yeah. I don't know where he is. I haven't seen him in a while, but like I wouldn't see him anyway because like I EB Games was the only like because I worked right beside him. That was the yeah. only like, reason I saw him. But yeah. Well, the interest, the funny thing about him is that like I didn't know who he was, mm-hmm. and I remember we we did that. I think we did one or two episodes together, maybe just one. I think it was one. And it's the guy I've been talking to at EB for like five years or something mm-hmm. like that. Whenever I went to go games, I'm like, oh, this guy's super nice. Didn't know what his name was, and then I'm like, oh, now he's in my basement. Sweet. Mm-hmm. He was an OG too. I remember like back in 2011, like when my parents owned the Trifon's Pizza. Yep. Like he was one of the people that were working there, and it was crazy to think about how like. I don't know. Just I never really ima- like. Just I guess thought that he was like someone I've known for a while. Yeah. It's just like yeah, but it's crazy to think about. Well, it. and it's that whole small world type of stuff, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, it's it's really interesting. I think him. We had Jesse on, who now works at EB. Mm-hmm. Um, not that we're like getting any kickbacks from EB, except mm-hmm. I did get those headphones. Mm-hmm. I told him. Yeah. Um, and then he came on to do was, was it the, the Big Mouth review? No, it was the SNES. I think was that one? Oh, or yeah, the NES. The SNES. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was that was a couple of years ago too. Mm-hmm. So then we started. This is kind of this is gonna be a like a, ta- a kind of two parter thing because this all started with your Instagram account, which we've mentioned on the show before is canceled. Mm-hmm. But in those first episodes that we started, we the very first episode we had a history of you kind of like how it started mm-hmm. and then how it led us to that first episode of the F word. Mm-hmm. And then for those of you who may not know, F word the E F part comes from entertain facts and not only is it a sweet name but it's also now paying homage to kind of what was it's so the i it'll, love you 3000 of the f word podcast you there you go. yeah exactly so it'll always exist it'll always be there and it'll always be like oh what's it mean now it still means entertain facts because entertain facts existed and then that's where you came up to me and you messaged me and it's probably because i think it was six months ago one of the classes that i was teaching for you guys i was like you should start a podcast or you should start a youtube channel off your thing Mm -hmm. and then like six or seven months later i remember you messaged me and you're like hey let's start this let's call Mm -hmm. it the f word and i'm like sweet but let's get into the instagram account and how you got 
from zero to what was the final tally before they clo- canceled you? 78.9. 78.9. Mm-hmm. Oh, so close to the 80. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Fucking. Honestly, as a fun fact, though, and just. Oh, uh, is it an entertaining fact? It kind of is. It's about entertaining <laughs> facts. On October 15th, 20, like this upcoming October 15th, would have been four years. Damn. Yeah, that's not a, that's not that. Yeah, it's not that long, long. But still, like, I started it in high school, and it's like weird to think that like the arc ended like prematurely, obviously. Before you, when you finished yeah. high school, mm-hmm. like right before I finished high start school, start your next chapter. Maybe it was just meant to be. I guess so. I wasn't honestly like I tell this to everyone. No one believes me. I wasn't very sad. I well, was like, I, I know you. I was disappointed. Sad. I'm like, really? Like, that's fuck. Because honestly, it is a stupid reason. Like, I yeah. was totally justified to be doing what I was doing. Yeah, I think the only thing there was. My the reason you I thought that you got canceled or they took you like they took your the account memes. down, not the memes. Well, it was it oh, was I the ones some, that Nick and I. Had I think there were two memes that even I'm like, okay, these these were fucking like bad memes. Well, and and it wasn't like they were bad in the sense like, like any. It was just one of those things where like because enough people like in the, mm-hmm. the time now. Uh, people are just looking to cancel anybody, which, by the way, if anyone if anyone listens to Chris D'Elia's Congratulations podcast, episode 138, which came out today on YouTube, I think it came out yesterday on audio, mm-hmm. his first 10, 15 minutes is him talking about the cancel culture, and he's like, he compares it to dating somebody mm-hmm. that starts to change things you're like okay i'm on board we're dating we're going out for supper everything's really great i'm learning about you mm-hmm. i'm caring about your thoughts and you're coming into my house and you're like does the end table need to be there and then you move all my shit around to service you and anything i say against that is an attack on me and you're ready to cancel like it was so funny so i highly recommend everybody take a look because obviously he's better at it than me mm-hmm. um but i think in the mix of all that the stuff that you were putting out because you transitioned from the facts to the memes. Mm-hmm. And that's where I was just like, stick to your lane, right? But mm-hmm. that's me and that's you, right? But also, they've been cracking down on everybody for copyright in general. Mm-hmm. It's which, really stupid. They have like, stu- like stupidly strict rules. And I know how to get around it now because I remember on like Lazy Canadian, I did a whole like How I Met Your Mother, like good scenes. Saw that, yeah. And didn't get like stuck like, stricken down because all my posts. Did they would, comment on it? Like, no. did they send you an email saying, hey, be careful with this? Or Every single post would always get taken down on Entertain Facts, like, every single one yeah. and have to reappeal it. But like apparently if you just zoom in and do the square format, it bypasses the copyright rules, which is how like a lot of pages get it by it. But I didn't know that at the time. So, are you talking like if the whole frame is one by one, and you zoom mm-hmm. into a smaller frame on Instagram, then it doesn't recognize it as the entire thing. Mm-hmm. So it's okay. like double clicking if you're like watching like Netflix and like kind of zooms in on the screen, so it fills right. everything. That's how it like it's supposed to. So like no black lines, but like you totally zoom, like looks good. Like hey, let me show you. Like you'll be able to see this, but mm-hmm. I don't know where it is actually. I post a lot. Like, For oh, those of you listening, which that's all you're doing. He's searching through his phone right and looking for so a just clip. Just looks like this, right? And yeah. it's zoomed in. It mm-hmm. doesn't show the whole frame. Yeah. And, okay. Yeah. 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 So essentially, you're just scaling. You're just cropping it. Mm-hmm. Just cropping it. So yeah. it gets and then you, so for all of you Instagram people out there, just crop your shit. Mm-hmm. If you want to get by, that's honestly, if you want to get past copyright for video, just make it a square and zoom it in, and you get by it. So then, before all of the all of this stuff, before F word and everything like that, entertain facts started. And obviously started from zero. Mm -hmm. So let's start from zero. Well, actually, there is prior to Entertain Facts, like I'd say B E F, before Entertain Facts, Mm -hmm. just like get my grounding because I didn't just like start an Instagram. Like this was my first attempt. I think around over. I think I did like over ten Instagram accounts prior to this. Like I started in like grade six or seven, which is just like I think it's gonna sound cringy, but I don't care. I'm just owning it now. One was a Minecraft fact account. I think it's still up. I don't know. I don't know what it's called. I think it's Sleepy Craft or something. It was a stupid name, but it's like still up there. I'm pretty sure. I had some other like minor like meme pages for like YouTubers I'd do, but it was just like just stuff like that. And I always just stop. Like I always got like I think highest I ever got was 800, and that still was good. yeah that was like that was it. Then I just kind of stopped. But fun fact about that actually, I met someone from Saskatoon, like some girl who had a Minecraft fan account, and I just like messaged her like three weeks ago. Because we haven't talked like, like since recently, then. like yeah. literally this three weeks ago. Yeah, three weeks ago. Because like we followed each other, and I'm like, this might sound weird. Because if like I'm wrong, it's just like I mean, it could sound like a fucking clown. But like, did you used to run a Minecraft fact account? And then yeah, we just started talking again. And it's like yeah, there's been like since like grade seven, I would say. So that's a lot. So you guys gonna be building 
your love together? No, we're not building our love together. Oh. <laughs> this is not a How I Met Your Mother. You know, I used to make fun of Minecraft, but then, um, then the idea came to me. I was listening to, I forget who I was listening to, but they're like, my kids are thinking things in their heads and creating it on Minecraft. And at a glance, it looks like, what are you guys doing here? Mm-hmm. But when they get out into the real world, they're going to be raised with the belief that if I think it, I can build it. And so Minecraft could very well spawn the largest generation of engineers that and architects mm-hmm. that are going to, like, the world over. Like, they're just going to take over and have this imagination that, well, I played this game that allowed me to do that and mechanically showed me mm-hmm. how to do it. So, yeah, I've, I've completely taken out any issues I have because I've never had issues with video games anyways yeah, like no. I, obviously I play them I lo- I adore them but for some reason that one was like eh, that's stupid right well I always thought of it like as a Lego like just a Lego video game where you can just build yeah. things and that's like well and that's I and mean, if you ask most engineers for instance or people that build stuff they're like oh I remember having a set when I was a kid yeah. at Lego and always wanting more and more well this is the Lego that actually allowed you more things and no parent ever stepped on a Minecraft well, that we know of that we know of Unless, can you buy them physically? Well, I mean, there's Minecraft toys you can buy. Okay, maybe that one. Yeah, no. but I don't really, think it hurt like, as much. Yeah, they, not not nearly enough. Unless they stepped on the TV. Like, unless you push the TV over, it broke, then the parents stepped on it, and then fuck. But in that case, their whole foot's fucked. But here's the thing. If you, like, step on a broken TV, I feel no sympathy for you because, like, how the fuck do you not see a broken TV on the ground? Well, especially the old ones, which no one has the old ones anymore. Oh, my God, that break the floor. That would break your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everything about it. Because then that thing's deep, and those guts. I used to have one like a big, big, big one. It was yeah. well, what happened. Um, yeah, my buddy has one for his daughter now, mm-hmm. so she watches D- Disney movies on VCR. Yeah, so no. she he's actually raising her now to watch movies on a VCR, which is amazing. She's gonna go to her friends. I just watched this new VCR tape. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> oh, what's a VCR? It's gonna come back, man. Everything's gonna eventually come back. There's gonna be a VCR I'm trying to streaming. Think, I know we're veering off here, but I was trying to think of something. I was listening to the radio today. Mm-hmm. And I've been listening to it more for like just news radio mm-hmm. stuff because I'm finding now when everyone's like, oh, read the newspaper. It'll get you, quote unquote, informed, right? Which for anyone who's curious, a little fun fact, informed means information. So you're in information with the rest of the world on information that you're getting. Um, but anyways, I was thinking, just like I was thinking about Minecraft, when it comes to the music that's coming out today. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much of it you listen to. I don't listen to any of it, so like I have the new no stuff, idea. Like not really. But I honestly, legitimately feel that a lot of the music that's being produced for mainstream is actual garbage. Oh yeah, and and not even in the sense that like an '80s parent will listen to sev- like uh, music. Or sorry, a '70s parent will listen to music from the '80s when synth was coming out and thinking like that's not music. This mm-hmm. is music, and saying oh, all the music on this radio is crap. I don't remember when the radio actually came out, but I think it was around the '70s and '80s. And then subsequently, like an 80s parent listening to 90s stuff saying that it's crap and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, we have to wait 10 years later to no. actually see if it was crap, but it I honestly is. legitimately feel like we're in an era where there's just so much crap coming out. Well, for me, like I guess my like viewpoint is more like objective just because I am like in that generation, like the majority loves the music. I fucking hate it. I hate it. I, 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 I can't. can't. No, it just all this it just I can't understand what they're saying. Mm. Like 6 9 I, I have no clue why people like him. He what? just screams into the mic, and that is it. It's not music. There's no flow. He just screams loudly and does yeah. so many bad... All these people do so many bad things, and no one gives a fuck. Well, they're all talking about drugs. Mm-hmm. Drugs, sex. Which is so weird, but they're talking about drugs in like an era where drugs is the worst thing. Mm-hmm. So one of the parks near Soph's parents, like my parent, my mother and father-in-law's place, mm-hmm. an ex-cop that lives in that area was like walking his dog, and he found a backpack. And obviously, being a cop, he knows. He grabbed it with branches. Mm-hmm. Because fentanyl that they're lacing all these drugs with is so bad that if you touch it, you could potentially die. Mm, fuck. Like, and this stuff they're putting in these drugs that these kit that these artists are saying to take. Not all artists, but mm-hmm. some specific ones. And it's just like, what are you fucking talking about? Mm-hmm. Like, at least I know some of the old stuff. At least when you're just talking hip hop, for instance. Well, it was just weed. That was pretty much it. But not even that. Like they were talking about, it was talking about gang culture, but they were talking about 
the culture itself. Some of them, yes, glorified it, mm-hmm. like shooting somebody down on the corner and all that stuff. But then you have Ice T. It's like five in the morning. Cop, uh, burglars at my door. Glock forty five in my dresser drawer. That was less of a of a oh this is great stuff. More of like I needed that Glock in my dresser drawer because these burglars are coming consistently mm-hmm. at five a.m. And then I'm gonna get blamed by the cops for having a gun and all that. Like it was. There was just something different about it, and especially because I'm more into older mm-hmm. stuff in general. But I'm just, it's just weird. Well, so. there was one guy, I don't know, I forget his name, but he got arrested. And he wrote, released a song called Murder on My Mind. And it was a song where he talks about uh, just like uh, shooting his friend accidentally on the streets. Mm-hmm. And he actually did. Like the song was based on reality. Like he was retelling the events in a song. W N Y N W Melly yes. Murder on My Mind. Yeah. And then he did that. No one knew about it. They just thought it was a song. He released a sequel from the, his friend's perspective. Yeah. So it was like he was milking his friend's death for fucking money. And people were listening to it as the case was going on, as he was getting charged, saying, this is a good song. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't deny that some of the beats are good. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you do, you do have to go past it. But even then, some of the lyrics, the, the the rhythms and melodies that they're putting together, I just can't get into it. Like, I'll, I'll listen to some of it because my goddaughter listens to a lot of it. Um, but I'm just sitting. I'm like, I, I honestly think that it's crap, and it's not even that I'm some old fucker now. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm only 31, but still, like, you know what the younger kids and their like the teens are listening to, like your mm-hmm. generation of friends. I'm like, I actually think that this won't age very well. And no. it, and me saying this isn't me being an old fucker. It's more so like it's actually legitimately not that good enough to stand mm-hmm. the test of time because no. the parents from the, like the 90s, the 80s, and 70s that complained about their kids' music, they mm-hmm. were wrong because a lot of those songs are still huge today. Well, Eminem is just one example, like old songs like that that are still like relevant as fuck. Like people like love mm-hmm. all his old sh- like songs, but like I cannot imagine 6 9 Having like I'm sure like I'm not gonna say like all his songs are bad because I've been listening to all of them like I'm not I'm sure he's not gonna have multiple songs people look back at like oh that's still a good song like maybe one yeah, or two it depends I think the big thing is and this is how I'm gonna start tying it back in I, I promise um, but anybody that listens to the deep dives know that we there's tangents about I think it's this thing we've talked about I think we talked about it on the show too where it's really hard to cut through the noise mm-hmm. and for and when you do you have a very small window to do anything there. Mm -hmm. So I release a song tomorrow. I have tomorrow and maybe a week from the time I release it to make an impact. Now, Mm -hmm. if I'm, let's say, a Drake, then people are going to like listen to it all summer Mm -hmm. because I'm a big name and stuff. But if I'm on the lower tier, even Drake's album, Scorpion, which I didn't care for, I thought there was 12 really good tracks on there, not 20, a 24 mm-hmm. you know, track album. I still buy CDs too, so that's a thing for me. I don't think you can last enough and you keep having to pump out things at a pace that obviously the faster you go, you're compromising something. Mm-hmm. So then we're going to get back to the other accounts that you had, mm-hmm. but at least with the Minecraft one, did you get an understanding right off the bat that I have a lot of BS to cut through. Well, it wasn't like for all these like f- like pages. I guess I started up. A lot of it was like a lot. Like everything I did like went to entertain facts. So for like obviously whatever it was called, my Minecraft fact account. Mm-hmm. Like the layout I used for that one was more or less the same one I used for the start of video game True Facts, which was Entertain Facts, a different name. So it was just how to like stand your like stand out, how to do things, like how to like actually know because right now i'm also marketing for like my aunt who's a realtor Mm -hmm. i'm actually getting paid to do it. it's not just like you know whatever sweet but it's one of those things where i like from all these years of doing things and like knowing how to do it like knowing what to it's not a big secret either like i can like i the biggest thing everyone asks me like how do you get followers is just use hashtags that's it like that's the thing i learned a lot i'd always interact with other people too like i wouldn't go around begging someone to follow me but i actually like a bunch of like people's posts like in a row that was the biggest thing I'd always do, and they'd always follow me back, even if I didn't follow them. You okay? So, so I'd go you to your account, like say, thing, yeah. and I would like like twenty pics in yeah. a row, and like they notice because obviously it's hard not to notice, and they'd like click yeah. follow. So I'd go to like Minecraft, like a hashtag Minecraft, and for like an hour straight, just do that to a bunch of different accounts, and I'd gain crazy, well, crazy, quote unquote. 
Well, when we were doing YouTube and I was like racking my brain on how to get our videos seen, mm-hmm. that was the one thing that kept coming up. It's like going over and commenting on other people's posts, but not being like, not commenting as in, hey, follow me. But actually like actually leaving a comment mm-hmm. and then seeing what comes back. If you get one, great. If not, like, but actually leaving a comment there mm-hmm. so that you start engaging with the people. And if the comment's good enough, I know I've done this before, the people will look at who's sent it and maybe click on their profile mm-hmm. and then take a look. I do that for like a lot of my like comments, even on the Lazy Canadian, I always like look at who comments. Like I look at their profile, I look at like anything like that and like, yeah. Do you think it's better that they've gotten rid of the numbers? Like for now likes? it just shows the fir- one person who liked a second name and then, and others. I think so. Like I just think, I don't think it really matters. Like, I don't really care. I remember there was one day though, uh, for some reason, my Instagram showed me all the likes. So this was like really like douche, I know, but I just was curious. So I went to see someone else's uh, grad p- photo just because at this time, like I just disliked this person just to see who got more likes and I got like 50 more likes. So I was pretty happy. But Shut I think in that sense, face. it is a good thing because I don't like you shouldn't like really care. Like, it's not a big deal. And like a lot of people do focus way too much on it and they actually like do care. Well, of course. I mean, that's mm-hmm. that's almost like your currency. Mm-hmm, like exactly. a like is akin to a dollar. But too many people, especially in like today's age, like of my generation, I guess, they like use likes in for like social media as actual like praise. And they like yeah, live like said, off it, of it. It's the equivalent of opening your wallet mm-hmm. and the one guy has ten dollars and you've got two one hundred dollar bills. Mm-hmm. Right. And he's sitting there with his ten likes and you're sitting there with two hundred and you're like, I'm better than you. But I think that's that's just how things are evolving mm-hmm. until they eventually devolve. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and I don't even know if it gets to a point where, because it's really interesting. So before, if you're looking at it in back in the day, and I can, and by back in the day, I'll say, you know, 2000s, mm-hmm. where your reputation meant something. So you were getting likes in the, in the sense of like, if somebody asked, hey, who that, who's that person? And then they'll start asking a bunch of people and mm-hmm. you'll gain a reputation. Or if you're a, a restaurant owner, Right, people will come there. Then you'll know other people, yeah. and then eventually people will start knowing you. That was kind of like a physical like that you got from everybody mm-hmm. there, but it was there on the spot, and you're hoping that it generated because those dislikes travel just as fast. Mm-hmm. That's right. Bad reviews f- travel faster and are more volatile than a good review. Well, I always look at bad reviews when I'm like ever buying something first. Well, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and which is weird. Like I look for the good ones. But I look at how many good ones to bad Well, I do both. Like, I, I start off with the bad ones just to see, like, okay, well, let's see, like, what the absolute, like, worst thing that could happen is. And then I'll get yeah. the good ones. But, I mean, the number of likes there ended up placing you at a certain point. Like, you, you reached a certain status with certain people based on, like, let's say the 50 people that had asked about you. Mm-hmm. You're now at a platform with 50 people kind of propping you up mm-hmm. or pushing you down you know, whichever way. And it's almost like that's just translated over to the digital world. And because the volume of people goes from 50 to 50 million, let's say, Mm -hmm. it's way too much for us to handle. Like I was talking about last week, and this is the part where it was cutting out because I remember when I was editing the Mm -hmm. video, I I noticed it just skipped. So for anybody who listened last week, sorry for the skipping. Uh, Looks like this one's going pretty good. I've been looking, yeah. Looks like it's Um, so good. I, I was talking about how we are infants in our capacity or our morality compared to the technology that we have available to us. Mm -hmm. And now I think, you know, infants or young children, if you beat down on them hard enough, like they'll cower and they'll develop problems. Like Mm -hmm. I Like they'll have like times where people won't get notified if their video gets uploaded yeah. and it's just super shitty. So for Instagram today, like I was, I would say in like the golden age of Instagram where it was like easy to gain followers. Just if I was like from starting from zero to like now, like if I didn't, if I wasn't gifted the amount of followers for lazy Canadian, mm-hmm. like there would, it would have been so fucking hard to like do that. Cause like meme pages, like meme pages are just an oversaturated market. I didn't want to do superhero shit anymore just because it's kind of like. I spent like four years doing it and there's like everyone that's also stupidly oversaturated because it's just either bad posts or just like self-entertained facts did that I got deleted for so I didn't want to do that 
but yeah like for you like for the effort podcast it's like for their, that page to grow is so much stupider now because the likes getting taken away is a good thing I'd say yeah but if they fix the algorithm it'd be like that's fine it's like a perfect like combo well we I haven't even been consistent with it like mm-hmm. we got a lot of we got more people that followed the videos that you made than any post I do mm-hmm. but my posts are just literally a poster mm-hmm. like it's like Twitter too um, there were some podcasters that were tweeting back and forth and they're like well Twitter's pretty much this dead zone because podcasters are following other podcasters mm-hmm. to help support them and liking and retweeting yeah. and all that but how many of those other podcasters are actually listening to their stuff to boost their numbers too? Mm-hmm. Right. So that's why it was so cool when that one podcast actually reached out and like, Hey, listen to our stuff. I'll listen to yours. If you like it, then leave us a review. If not, let us know. And the same thing I said, if you like what you hear, mm-hmm. like don't just leave a five star review. We yeah. don't know each other. So it's cool. But if you do whatever you don't like, then let me know. Like be, mm-hmm. we, we were both very honest and mm-hmm. we just, they happened to like it and give us like they five star liked it. Mm-hmm. Right. So, which is, which is really cool, yeah. which is almost the equivalent of commenting on another person's post, mm-hmm. but we're so inconsistent. And what I understand of the algorithm is that it, it values consistency. Mm-hmm. And so because we're essentially once, maybe twice a week. Yeah. That's why like we're only at 138. We haven't started it that long, but we're mm-hmm. only at 138, mm-hmm. right? Whereas my personal account has 755 people on there. Mm-hmm. But that's because it was a personal account. I would post other videos, especially when I was yeah. in real estate, like com- comedic real estate mm-hmm. videos and stuff. And a bunch of other things that, but I gained followers faster there than on this one. Okay. And yeah. so it's it's just like a, yeah, right now it's going to be, it's going to take forever. But even YouTube, mm-hmm. we've been on, we've been at between 900 we're at 970, I think, right now. Mm-hmm. And we've been doing YouTube for, what, three years now? But I think we also, like, we had Two. a good, like, decent, like, if you have a break, like, a long enough break, like, it's just going to, like, halt everything. Which is, well, like... Exactly. We, I think it was almost And the almost fact that year. we didn't lose, like, I think we gained. Yeah. Which was, like, something that, like, shouldn't have happened, but it doesn't matter. Like, I'm not complaining, but, like, still, like, that's just, like, whatever. Well, I'll tell you why. Because um, the one... The highest video we have, I think, is oh, yeah, 70,000. Like, those videos kept going. I noticed that. And yeah. it's still going because season three came out. So mm-hmm. people are like, oh, what's this money heist thing? And they're going back and checking out my season one review. I'm getting comments on season two review. And the I had a spoiler review mm-hmm. um, on a, on a uh, whatever, this big spoiler thing. And I was going to do a third one, which I still might. But now I'm like, oh, it's been too long since it's come out. But mm-hmm. I still could. Mm-hmm. I just don't have it in me. Like the one time we were going to record another episode and I had it propped up and ready to go and I did seven takes and for some reason it just wasn't sticking. I couldn't remember names. I couldn't get into a flow to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to do another one too, but I'm just like, I I don't know. It's, Mm -hmm. it's, I just don't think I have it in me to do the video. I'd rather just prop up the camera and start releasing just the video of our podcast. Just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. I think we're, Nick to side. Yeah. And Nick wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wish he was. But I, even that like little interaction, mm-hmm. I was like, hey man, how's it going? Whatever. Mm-hmm. Like it was nothing, right? Mm-hmm. Like and, and it doesn't seem and it's not like even that we're at any point, but mm-hmm. to him, like he's like, Oh, I just want to meet this guy that I've mm-hmm. like listened to or I've watched on the podcast and stuff, which is really interesting. Mm-hmm. And out of at a super super small scale. Well, it's, it's just nice. It's just like a nice feeling. Just like going. Just it's like, like meeting meeting the owner of a restaurant too. Mm-hmm. Like I know I've done that before. Like I've been lucky enough to know a lot of really good chefs, like, especially when I was living in Calgary. Mm-hmm. And so they'd introduce me to their head chef, and I'd be like, "Oh, dude, I've heard about you. You like you're fucking awesome, mm-hmm. and everything like that." And it was it's it's super exciting to meet people that you think would wouldn't even bother talking to you. Mm-hmm. And I think that has a lot to do with it. Yeah. So for me, like I guess. Entertain facts, but like just overall, like I guess because on the journey, like there were like definitely like rough. There's like a lot of rough patches, like just patches. Sorry, just like kind of losing, not losing. I never was going backwards. I don't actually. I might have been. I think there was a three week period where I was like slowly going backwards, like nothing drastic. But just when Instagram changed their algorithm, was like when I started like getting just like hits because I only did photos. Mm-hmm. So then I changed the videos because likes were still a thing at that time. Mm-hmm. So like they wouldn't get any likes, but these videos would get like crazy amount of views. Yeah. People are just lazy and they just fucking like scroll and cancel the view. So I started doing videos more and more for video facts. And this was more like just better looking and just like 
easier, or I guess more practical. Because if I ever like want to do a fact on a scene, I can just show the scene, not just a random photo, and just kind of like in this scene, this happens. Well, it provides you the exact. It provides mm-hmm. you both context, both yeah. sides of the of the con- like the fact. Mm-hmm. So I just like started doing more videos, and then after, because like I well, like I enjoyed doing facts, and like it wasn't like I just stopped hated doing facts. It was just I ran out of facts to do because I always hated reposting facts mm-hmm. because I knew like lots of bigger fact pages like they'll repost a fact every week and it's just kind of like there's no like layover so if i ever reposted a fact it would be like three months at least in between me posting it but i always felt like bad doing it because i'd come like i don't want to just see the same shit over and over in my feed like i wouldn't want my followers to do it either but we were already into entertain or at the f word at yeah, that too right near the videos it was the f word yeah because i remember when you started doing the videos and you were working out layouts and mm-hmm. stuff and we're like oh those videos look cool like mm-hmm. it was it was sweet and that was a big one too because when I first heard about Entertain Facts, because mm-hmm. I had no idea mm-hmm. that you were doing it, um, I heard it from Soph, because Soph's like, oh, Anthony's got this account that he does, and it's like 20,000 followers or mm-hmm. something like that. And then so when I saw you a couple weeks after, mm-hmm. that's when I was like, dude, you should start a YouTube thing, because mm-hmm. that's when YouTube was like, it was like getting huge. Mm-hmm. Like, this is when Screen Junkies was like massive, and mm-hmm. Collider was massive, and everyone was hitting like... Their million dollars. It was before before stuff. the ad apocalypse. I think is like what YouTubers call it. Like, well, the, the ad apocalypse was recent. Mm-hmm. Like that was the Vox ad apocalypse thing that was going on. This is like what when we oh, uh, twenty seventeen. This was like three, two or three years before we started. Mm-hmm. Um, no, no, I don't think it was so. Two years before we started, or from today, like two or three oh, years okay. ago, today, different day, kind yeah. of thing. But like all of these guys were huge. Like mm-hmm. I remember Jeremy Johns, let's say, was had moved over to Collider, and he was one of their hosts there. The, the guy, John Campia, who was leading it, like all of those guys, they were kind of, and, sc- and obviously Screen Junkies with their movie fights, like they were getting Kevin, Kevin Smith, and at Comic-Con they would have their own movie fights panel, and mm-hmm. so the nerd culture was like at its peak, mm-hmm. and then now it's like, you know, yeah. dwindling. Mm-hmm. and But at the time I was like, this is what you need to do because this is what everybody's fucking doing, you got to get on it, right? Mm-hmm. And that's kind of, mm-hmm. and then so we were doing this stuff, but that's when you transition to... Mm-hmm. So for the F word, though, I know, I think we did mention it, like, the first episode, but, like... But it's not on Anchor, so I don't know how many people have actually listened to that first episode, because that's when we were on Libsyn. Mm. Oh, yes. And we were using Libsyn, and it it was only sending it to Apple, Mm -hmm. but we had no idea what the hell was going on. We were just, like, uploading it, and fingers crossed, Mm -hmm. whereas Anchor has been a godsend. So for the F word podcast, this I made this name before Gordon Ramsay had his show. Mm -hmm. So this was something I already, like, thought of. Like, I had... Before I even talked. Like, oh, yeah. This was like, yeah. so we started it in, I want to say, like, June of 2017. Something like that. I tried in December, November or December of 2016. Okay. That was the first attempt. So it was with two other comic book pages. I forget their names. They're both not active anymore. Uh, but it was, it was a joke because it was funny because at the time, like, one of these guys had, like, 50,000 followers. And he's like, well, like, they were just joking, like, we're on your podcast. We have more followers than you do. And I was like, but now I, I surpass them both. So it was like a nice accomplishment. But yeah, we tried it. And I met, it was so stupid. Cause I had a shitty laptop. I used Skype for the call. And then uh, we had this just recorder. And their audio was like, you got to hear them from mine. My audio didn't work. So it was just like, it was, it was shitty. It wasn't good, like good quality. But like, you could hear what they were saying. And then it was just like long pauses where just silence. Where you would be. Yeah, where I would be talking. So we just didn't do it. And then I was just kind of laid off the idea. But then, yeah, Nick, I think Nick was talking about it and he wanted to like do it really good. And I'm like, oh, I don't really know how to do it. And then we just came and like recruited you like the Nick Fury from Iron Man scene. Yeah. Well, and I had no fucking idea either. Mm-hmm. The only the only thing I knew was a general structure of how other people are doing it. Mm-hmm. And I knew I wanted to do reviews. Mm-hmm. But the thing was, a thing I quickly realized is my review or my movie acumen was only at a higher level than the people around me who didn't have a high enough knowledge on movies to begin Mm -hmm. with so i was like the five foot five or i was like a what a a six foot four basketball player Mm -hmm. against with a team of like four foot people so Mm -hmm. just by sheer virtue of being taller than everybody i was a quote-unquote better basketball player Mm -hmm. but maybe i was missing every three-pointer i was doing everything so i think the fact that a lot of other people weren't as involved in that culture as Mm -hmm. i was 
made me think that I could do it because everyone's like, we know when people don't know how to do something, like, oh, you should try it. You should do this. Like, you'd be perfect for it. But what's their litmus test for it? Like, what's mm-hmm. their basic knowledge of something going into it? But anyways, yeah, like, that's how you guys came in. I had to look everything up. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I went on YouTube to look up everything. Well, we still have these microphones, mm-hmm. which are still regarded as really good microphones for podcasts. I like them. It's also, like, a nice, like, aspect of like, just talking to an actual mic. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, and we so we had the microphones. I bought that sound mixer, which I'm bringing that sound mixer back in play mm-hmm. because it's not – this laptop Were we not using it before? We were using it in the beginning, mm-hmm. but ever since I got this preamp, I've been using that. However – that thing will be even better because these microphones are both XLR mm-hmm. and um, uh, auxiliary. Okay. And they work just fine with auxiliary as X and XLRs. Mm-hmm. But that allows me, that would allow me to just work the, the do it better mm-hmm. because right now you and Vass, when you're doing it, are on one, oh, one wave. wavelength. Okay. Whereas oh, yeah. there, I'd, but I'd have to find out how to do three wavelengths because mm-hmm. Audacity isn't that easy to work with. Mm. So at least for that, if I had another program, like um, I think it's a Final Cut or something okay. like that, that would give me the option mm-hmm. to run the three uh, wavelengths. But anyways, all that shit, I had no idea. Mm-hmm. So, But I thought I did based on that. That's why when you guys recruited me, I'm like, fuck yeah, we could do this. This is going to be the best thing ever. Mm-hmm. But Lots of, a lot of people like think wrong. it's so easy, just to, especially with entertain facts. Like the biggest thing is like, so I guess like we can just like backtrack just a bit. Like for the high school, like when I like, like honestly, people hated me. Mm-hmm. Like they like when they found out. Oh, about yeah, they hated facts, me. Yeah. And it was like really uncomfortable because I was like one of those guys that was like not like popular, but like I was very like well, like, not very, but like I was well known. Like if you said my name, like people would know who I was, and like I'd know people. I just wouldn't like talk to many people. But I remember my French teacher, uh, he wanted, he ordered clothing and he wanted to like take a photo. So I went to his cap class to ask him to like send me the photo. And cap is just like homeroom, I guess, like mm-hmm. for like more like common terms. And I walk in and he's wearing the sweater. People are huddled around his desk and he's showing my page. Mm-hmm. And I walk in, right? And just death stares like from all these people. Like that's like he has that page. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I, and people hated me. Like people were talking shit. Like, this was around 20,000 followers. Mm-hmm. And I just didn't really care. I was like, whatever. Like, they're just, like, I knew it was just born out of jealousy just because, like, not to be that guy, but, like, lots of people, like, would want it. And I, like, understood, like, I have something, like, not lots of people have. Like, I was like, it was a different thing. And it was a local thing for mm-hmm. them. Like, whenever you look at something with large numbers, you never think it has anything to do with your geographical area. You mm-hmm. think it's, like, some kid in New York that's exposed to everything. And then you're like, oh, wait, no, it's literally the guy next to me. Mm-hmm. So I don't know when it happened because it was like, kind of like a, just a rather like fast drop off, but people just kind of like stopped hating and they just like they, at my old school, at my high school, like there was a fuck ton of support for entertain facts. Like teachers were in on it. Students were in on it. Like we well, had teachers even when we started the F word that mm-hmm. were listening. Do they still listen? Do you? Well, I mean, you're out of school uh, now. But. I think they watch the live show on entertain facts. Yeah. So like, I don't think they like made the transition over. Yeah. Yeah. I think they like our Facebook page though, so they like see like the video and shit like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they were like they loved like entertain facts. Teachers loved it. Like students like loved it. Like they were like I think I sold around twenty sweaters in one order like at one time. So like just people around, mm-hmm. and it was just like, it was like, just nice to see people like not being a dick and just like actually like supporting something you would do in that like endeavor. Did it ever mess with you mentally? Like well, I know you're saying like it was no big deal or whatever, mm-hmm. but like. I tell people when they ask me about the YouTube thing, I had to stop because I was getting mm-hmm. like actual legit anxiety. Like, and it, all three things that I was trying at that time were failing spectacularly. Mm-hmm. At least I th- thought they were failing spectacularly. So I had to stop because mm-hmm. it was messing with my head. Did any of that happen either when you had that three week drop or when you had people hating you or just adjusting to the rise of it? Like, were there points of there where you were just like, you know, on the brink of feeling like you were going to mm-hmm. lose it in one way, shape, or form. Well, the only, like, notable thing I can remember, like, where I was ever, like, just hating everything was, I would say, like, it was actually, like, this year. Like, right near, like, before it got deleted. Like, that whole, like, month of May was, like, probably one of the worst months I can remember. Like, that was, like, leading up to finals and shit like that. Just everything was, like, changing. I had to write two MC scripts. One was fake. One was real. Like, all, like it was, like, a, I think, in total, 20 pages of like script I had to write. Uh, I had to like do, uh, there was like, a bunch of shit. I got in a car accident because someone hit me. Oh, you never even mentioned that. Did you mention that? I think so. I was backing out of a like parking lot and someone hit me. I still have to deal with this. I'm not even mad that she hit me. I'm just mad that I had to deal with SGI mm. and I'm still doing it. 
like they were supposed to call me for this like to get my uh demerits taken off but they yeah. still haven't done it so i have to like call them back or something i guess but sidetrack i got um somebody hit and run me uh mm-hmm. in calgary at the mall i was mm-hmm. going i was there in between semesters and i was just going to the mall someone had hit my car had no idea didn't leave anything or whatever it took me six months i had to do a statement with the police and i had to do a state two statements or something with sgi because they just wouldn't believe that they wouldn't believe any of it i'm like mm-hmm. i was there and they hit my car it was in a parking lot What's going to happen? Like, how else am I supposed to yeah, explain no. to you that at one point my car was fine and then the next one it wasn't? Like, I don't honestly, know. I, was, I wasn't even mad that she, hit my car, that she hit my car. It was just the fact that I had to deal with all this bullshit, like, yeah. on top of everything else I was doing. That's what made the, the car, her hitting you even worse. Mm-hmm. I, I wasn't even like mad. I'm just, I was just like, literally, what the fuck? Because I didn't eat that day, I remember. And I, like, I couldn't even go angry. home and eat because she had to, f- I was fucking waiting for her. Cause at the time I didn't know like any better, but like, cause obviously I was never in a car accident before, but like, she's like, my dad's coming. And I just like needed her information, but I was kind of like so mad. I'm like, what fucking ever? Just hurry the fuck up. Should have had a Snickers. No, oh, I guess so. But yeah. When I'm hangry, oh, I am fucking angry. Like I'm already gold angry. Oh, mm-hmm. but yeah, at that time it was just like hard to like kind of make posts like make new because i have to make new posts every day it's not like a meme page where i can just steal shit right like i gotta make this shit for me uh so i was just like doing that every night and then i had like just personal issues with just like this girl i was talking to and just it all kind of like weighed on like just start building 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 Mm -hmm. and then it got deleted i was kind of like well that sucks like i was like obviously disappointed but i'm like it's one less thing I have to worry about. So it's kind of yeah. like, that's nice. So it just took more stress off and shit like that. But people like, some like people actually like really sad. Well, like, for sure. Like I, I was getting a, I got a couple of messages through the F word Instagram saying, Hey, what happened to the page? I'm like, Hey, it's getting appealed or whatever. Go over to lazy Canadian, find mm-hmm. it or whatever there. Um, but I mean, like, it's like anything. If you, once the show ends, mm-hmm. you know, people still talk about their old shows. Like people still talk about the Sopranos. It's like, okay guys, it's over. Yeah. Anything that they felt was a part of their lives on a daily basis Mm -hmm. has a big impact. That's why fans, for instance, get so volatile because, you know, it's it's easy to say you guys are just fans like you guys are just sitting here watching these things. And yes, you're investing your money in, but you guys aren't creating it. Why are you taking ownership Mm -hmm. and agency on this product? But you got to understand that when and we don't I know I don't until after the fact when it's part of people's lives. That they're looking every day on, let's say they the reason. Let's say some of the people the the reason they go on Instagram is to see those posts, mm-hmm. right? And so I can imagine when that goes, it's the same thing as losing something else you've done on a regular basis. Like mm-hmm. if I go and I get a ham and mustard sandwich from this place on the corner every single day, and mm-hmm. then the one day I go there and that place is gone, it's closed down. Uh, that is going to be a bad day for me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't have that place now, but. I remember there was that place when I was living in Calgary because I'd well, we would walk everywhere, and so a lot of those institutions that were there that were part of the day to day, when they left, I was heartbroken. Mm-hmm. Like it was not a good day, and I, it always falls on the day that's shitty, anyways. Mm-hmm. Just like it was for you, and just like it was for maybe that one other person that was looking for your page mm-hmm. and they can't find it. Well, I remember I was I never said this to anyone because I knew this like I was just like as a purpose of being a dick, but uh, it was that grad. So I was emceeing like my prom. And I started off with like, I think I mentioned this, just talking about my lost friend and how mm. I miss him so much. It was entertain facts. Mm-hmm. And I've had, I had a couple of people come to me like, I didn't know it got deleted. Like I loved your page. You could see it all the time. Like I'd always look at it mm. and I'm like, you didn't notice for a month. It wasn't there. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> you loved it. You're a huge fan. You never noticed it was just gone. Well, they probably knew it was there and they probably you're using, there's this theory I was listening to called the remembered self. Mm-hmm. So they're basing it off of the self, the, the, the version of themselves that they remember mm-hmm. seeing the entertained fact. Well, I, I, that's happened to me too before where I've like, could have sworn I saw something but I never did. And it's just kind of like, if it's in your daily routine, like that's why I never like bust anyone about it. Cause like if it's in your daily routine, yeah. you just kind of expect it to be there. And if it's not, especially on Instagram, where it's like not as noticeable, like if I'm like going somewhere and like it's closed down, that's mm-hmm. noticeable. But on Instagram, if it's some, if a page is gone, like I won't know. Question: Is casual still around? Because mm-hmm. I haven't seen anything. I don't from think he's him. posted in a while, but like I know, like, like he still follows. Like we follow each other on my personal and shit, and he follows Lazy Canadian. Well, stuff. I know he follows my personal mm-hmm. and and the F word, and I haven't seen a post from him in a long time. Which, if you guys haven't taken a look at it, you probably have seen him. If you're oh, wait, in August eighteenth, what the fuck? It's been a month. 
It's been a month to this day. Oh, jeez. Well, that was a funny timing. Send him a message. I did. I just said, okay. yo, where are you at? Yeah, tell him, tell him we're, we're, we're talking about you on the newest deep dive on if the only he would listen. Yeah. Uh, no, he's the good. You know what the, the thing with casual is? He started something that we should have done. Mm-hmm. No, he's so, a very good format. Like he's everything. got a great format. I, I love how his, I don't even know how he does that animation because mm-hmm. I've always wanted to do something like that where like the microphone comes up and the EF comes together or something like that. Well, he does it on Adobe, he says. Like, he does it on Adobe. on Adobe, yeah. yeah. And like I'm looking at getting our new, new logo done mm-hmm. too. Um, Jimmy, who's done the Infinity War and the Endgame podcast, the mm-hmm. breakdown, he's going to do T-shirts. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but anyways, like casual is like he's kind of like part of that family mm-hmm. that kind of started and he's really good so if you guys haven't checked taken a look at him i want to get him on and the reason i want to you i want to get him on for a couple of reasons a his reviews are good his format's mm-hmm. really good um he's an intelligent guy he's able to do a review in one minute and you get it also he just seems like a, he seems like he just fit in just naturally he's yeah like um i he sent me some audio stuff uh he sent me some of his samples mm-hmm. just because i was like hey like this is what i do with my audio and i just kind of like we don't do anything too crazy, at least with our videos and, and everything in terms of editing, but there is some post that is there. So he gave me a sample of his and I was able to isolate some of the negative noise in the background and, and mm-hmm. show him some stuff. And I'm hoping it's it's worked for him. But like he's just a he's just a good dude. We had one interaction because I, I didn't go off on him, but it looked like I went off on him on the Captain Marvel review. Oh, okay. Yeah, I went off. And then we like had a DM after mm-hmm. and uh, he respectfully declined to go far as far as the conversation was leading towards. Mm-hmm. And then so I apologized after, which like, you know, mad respect mm-hmm. for him on that part, because like I'm one of those people that could generally talk about anything mm-hmm. and it doesn't matter. Like if you want to talk about any topic, mm-hmm. if I don't know, I want to hear you talk about it. I don't I don't care if we go and get into an argument or whatever like you know my dad's a priest mm-hmm. we grew up in a church and one of my best friends that I talk to on a regular basis is an atheist mm-hmm. and him and I go back and forth like long four or five day conversations sometimes a week straight mm-hmm. and we're and he's pressing me on stuff and I'm talking to him about stuff and like they're super uncomfortable sometimes because mm-hmm. obviously they're he's poking and prodding in mm-hmm. spots that let's say I'm not familiar with or I don't understand or whatever because he's a much smarter, smarter person than mm-hmm. I am. But he's also one of those guys that he respects the boundaries as well. Mm-hmm. So, And I also don't take things personally. Mm-hmm. So like, if he's commenting on something that might be hard for me to take, it's not like I'm going to... I don't retaliate with a screw you. At least in those contexts. Well, you're actually just having like a debate. Like not like a debate, like just like you just it, it's an exchange yeah, of exactly. ideas. Or right? if he has an opposing view, you're not gonna like, yeah. oh well fuck you. Well and and the hard part is, especially when it comes to like you know, religious people and mm-hmm. non religious people. And I also I don't like calling him an atheist because I don't like the term atheist. Mm-hmm. I don't like it just as much as I don't like sexist or anything mm-hmm. like that. Like I don't He's just a guy that doesn't believe in God. He's just a non re- He doesn't believe in religions. That's it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm trying to n- not use the term atheist on anybody because Mm -hmm. i actually think not the fact that it has a negative connotation i think it definitely does no it it does and it shouldn't but at the Mm -hmm. same time people that call themselves that carry themselves like any other douchebag that Mm -hmm. wants to enforce their views on you like uh, somebody that's turned vegan for instance and they are trying to force everybody to be vegan and if you're not then Fuck you! Like I would they say, automatically hate you. Like this doesn't apply. Oh, this doesn't apply. Not to all anyone. atheists. Sorry, like, I'm just saying I've identify. never met an atheist that hasn't had that kind of like vegan attitude where they just like impose it. And it's like yeah. I even tell them like I don't care if you don't believe. Yeah. But they just have to like. Everyone or a lot of the people I've oh yeah every atheist I've met always feels the need to like just pressure their views on you, and it's kind of like well why? Well, and and I'm I, they might have been around religious people that have felt. To, to mm-hmm. do the same, right? But I mean, I know with ours, someone had, uh, it wasn't Nick, but somebody else who doesn't believe in any religion, mm-hmm. doesn't care for religions in general, uh, he's like, well, what's the difference between yours and a cult? I said, simple. You can walk through the door tomorrow mm-hmm. and we'll accept you and you can be part of the whole deal or whatever. And you can leave tomorrow. We won't even give a shit that if you came or not. Mm-hmm. We'll care about you when you're there and when you leave. If you want to be a part, if you want to still contact people like people to people, mm-hmm. then that's great. But in terms of the religious side of it, we're not going to hunt you down. We're not going to go looking for you. Mm-hmm. If you don't show up, bye mm-hmm. yeah, bye. You no, know, no one gives hope, a fuck. hope you enjoy. You hope you took something out of it. Hope mm-hmm. you met a friend. Hope or whatever. Like, 
it's just that's the way that I've always explained our shit. Mm-hmm. I know that there's other stuff out there that's a little bit more controlling and everything mm-hmm. like that. But with Nick in Calgary, like my buddy mm-hmm. oh. there, it's never been the case. And so that's why This I, is not Nick on the podcast, correct? No, 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 okay. not, not our Nick. No, no. This is my this is Nick from Calgary. Mm-hmm. But then Casual had the same thing. Like he went to a point he's like, "Listen, man, you're we're going to a spot where I have no want or need to ever mm-hmm. to go to right now or whatever. I'm like, oh, totally cool. Mm-hmm. And I felt really bad because I was going super hard because mm-hmm. I had a lot of feelings towards that that movie mm-hmm. and more of the behind the scenes stuff behind it. Well, I remember that always but happened. Anyways, super sorry, but super respectful guy, mm-hmm. really awesome guy, and he's a guy that I would highly recommend like checking out. Mm-hmm. And I hope he's okay because mm-hmm. it's strange that he hasn't posted a story. Because I look at his stories. Well, I, I think like, he, I posts. remember him like doing something. Like, I don't know if it's just me, like, again, like, re- just remembering it being there. But, like, I would say, like, decently recently, like, he was like him in a hotel or him playing with his cat. I could have sworn I saw. But I don't know. Maybe I just, like, fucking remember. For him. all we know, he's gearing up to, like, he's probably, he might have been recruited by some big company and he's going to be like, oh, I've just joined this thing and they're paying me 50 grand a month to do these videos. Like, mm-hmm. he could be just on, like, going away from Instagram because he has something better which I really hope is the case but I mean it could be also a case where it gets too much Mm -hmm. for anybody right like maybe he's you know for me it was work was going shitty I bought a rental property that was tanking Mm -hmm. real estate oh that was work sorry Uh, I was trying to balance that YouTube we were getting some hits Mm -hmm. like we had a couple videos that across 10k then they changed the algorithm Mm -hmm. then another person I remember sorry you can keep going after this but it was when we were going to be able to get monetized. Yes. Right as we hit it, they changed the fucking rule and like yeah, doubled man. it or something. Like the Super amount of shady. views and subscribers. Yeah, that, that pissed me off so much. Because we had hit it. Mm-hmm. Like that we had, we ended up having, I think we have like five or six videos well over 10K. Mm-hmm. But then what really crushed me is that there was this other guy that was doing mm-hmm. reviews and no knock against this guy. It was just this thing. I was like, he was... Just a personal. He was data. better at explaining his reviews, mm-hmm. but his reviews had really terrible quality, mm. like his audio and his video, uh, whereas ours was really great quality. And what really hurt me was that, not really hurt, but people were leaving comments like, oh, you guys are like so good. How do you only have this many followers? Mm-hmm. So clearly we were hitting the right notes. Like our audio was really good. Mm-hmm. I was super proud of our audio and our video, just the look of it was really good, mm-hmm. which I got some tips from a photographer friend of mine. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, he ended up doing one video, which he had said he got the information from Reddit, and he redid it, and he ended up going gangbusters overnight. Like, Mm -hmm. it was on... uh, I think it was Cloverfield, wasn't it? It was the Cloverfield paradox. And so he ended up doing this video where he was, like, mapping out and explaining Mm -hmm. it, and then all of a sudden, just boom, it catapulted him. And I'm like, well, fuck. Like, we've been going at this for, I think, almost a year at that point, Mm -hmm. and we haven't even come close. And it was just like this thing where everything seemed to just collapse, just like in May where everything was just mm-hmm. going haywire, haywire. At that point, I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. Mm-hmm. Like, I, it's, it's, I'm not a person that's ever had legit anxiety, and I know people who have mm-hmm. legit anxiety. I've had nervousness, and I've had, like, the feeling that, you know. Um, the sinking in your gut it's feeling. It's just this sinking gut feeling mm-hmm. for sure. But the feelings I was getting there and how it was affecting my outside world mm-hmm. – and how it happened so quickly, it's like, no thanks. Like, yeah, no. not a chance. Well, that's I can't the thing, like, doing it. with social media, like, it never happened to me. Because, again, like, I just found it, like, really cool and just, like, really, I was just really happy that I got the, like, opportunity just to, like, do this and have the skill set. Like, that's what I was taking away. Like, honestly, I knew, like, the game plan was to, like, use this as a way to boost myself for marketing and university. Like, just to, like, sure. say, I can do this. And that's, like, what I always used it for. So, I've ever had, like, presentations I like remember uh, in business class, we were having a presentation and like, like I did a company for, I think it was entrepreneurship where I, I could do marketing and I was doing it to a marketing guy, like I think Steve Clippenstein or Clippenstein or something like that. Like he's like part of 22 fresh and he does like an actual agency in Regina and like I actually impressed him because like I was doing this and people were just like, whatever. Yeah. And a lot of my classmates, it was an inside joke that I would always bring up entertain facts. Right. Just because like during presentations, like if it was relevant, I would bring it up. And they're all just like waiting for me to do it. And I say like, and I know like, you know, why should you trust us? And then it was like, I think at the time I had the Venom logo. Mm. I remember that. So I think I had like about 60K at like max. Like, well, this is why you should trust me. And it was just like blew him away. Like he's actually super impressed. I was like, okay, if I can impress like an actual marketing, like a CEO of a fucking firm. Mm. Like it's clearly a useful skill I have. 
Well, and I mean, the numbers speak for themselves mm-hmm. at that point. That's a cool thing. Like if you if you show up to a business meeting um, and you're saying like, hey, this is what we have going for us. Like I know a lot of I was reading this one article on the algorithms when it comes to uh, websites. Mm-hmm. So those websites that they say, hey, this is 10 celebrities that gotten terrible plastic sur- surgery or whatever. And then you click on it and it's it doesn't show you all in one page. Mm-hmm. You have to flip through it. Right. So then they'll go there and they'll say, well, hey, with this new style, we're actually getting one person to contribute 10 different clicks on our every time they click mm-hmm. once. So one equals 10 no matter what. So then that means we're going to keep getting more and more because mm-hmm. the more they swipe to the next page because it has to load up the next page, then the more information we do. That's why in between a bunch of them, they have ads, mm-hmm. right? So for ad space. And so those are numbers that just speak for themselves. So as an investor, you're looking at it you're like, well, shit, that's... Mm-hmm. Like your one post ended up getting 20 million people through it, which technically would have been 10 million, but it's still 10 million. I think that would be the numbers. So for you going up there, it's like, boom, 60 here. Mm -hmm. Like I've been doing something that's clearly right, as opposed to going into one where it's like, this is my idea. And I think I can get this Mm -hmm. many people based on this model, which could look good. But, but actually execution, like, yeah. Like whenever I tell anyone that like I do marketing for a realtor, like and obviously like if you go like an 18 year old's telling you they're like what the fuck like why and you'd like tell them why because i remember this was uh i was talking to this one family they were talking about how her daughter is like they were just bragging about her daughter and about how like good she's at social media and how her like facebook page for her company has 300 likes like oh yeah you know i know something about like having that like i think i had about like and at this time i'll fully admit i was bragging because like they were flexing on me it's like fuck you i'm gonna flex back i'm like yeah i had a 79 thousand or seventy eight thousand followers you know but then they got deleted and they tried like poking oh well you know well, you were doing something wrong i guess if you were getting deleted and i was kind of like oh no i was totally in the right because i will explain this right now go for because it i know my brother always makes fun of me saying i didn't know i did know that like legally i was a hundred percent in the right mm-hmm. like a hundred percent i have like i don't have it with me like I don't, i'm not gonna read the whole statement i have but like i actually background checked like i checked the canadian or the criminal code of canada to see I checked with my law teacher to see if I was doing what was legal. And he said he was on the verge saying, like, you could get in trouble, but it's also, like, you're using it. You're not making any money off it. You're just, like, promote. It's, like, free advertisement. You're just talking about it. Like, it's all in good use. So for Canada, and this is also very similar to the States, but I'm just, like, we live in Canada. So uh, it's if you post, if you have to, if you're going to use content, like a video, like I did, and it was a short amount of content, you used it for the purpose of teaching, criticism, or review, you're okay to use it. As long as you like credit, which I always did. I always credited, like I'd always do that. And yeah, I like, made no money off of it. Like for How Much Your Mother, I will say this right now. Like I turned my fucking page and I got people to watch that show. Like people, right. like the amount of times I posted it, like people hated it. Like I know my friend, like he joked about hating it so much, but I got people to watch that fucking show. Like it was free advertisement. And that's what pissed me off the most. It's just like, if they actually had a reason to delete me, it'd be okay differently. Or it'd be a different story, but they didn't have a reason to delete me, and they wouldn't even respond to my like they haven't responded to my appeal from like beginning of August. Was that the appeal that they said they're going to look into it the mm-hmm. second time? Like they yeah the second so time you sent in a second appeal, mm-hmm. and did they respond to the you saying we'll review and get back to you, or just nothing? They said we'll review and get back to you, and they never did. Yeah, which is like what the fuck. You got to keep going at it. I think I'm. Go- I think I need to look at a way because I think they said if you use a different email, like because if you use the same email, they said they should kind of get just trash it. Right. So maybe I'll like look at a different one. But honestly, like the meme page, it's just fun. Like it's just like a more like chillaxing. Like, I don't really care. Like I think I started off with eighteen point nine thousand like a month ago or like mm-hmm. around two months ago, and now I'm at eighteen point five. But like I dropped like almost a thousand. Like actually over a thousand. I was just gaining, so it like kept it afloat. Mm-hmm. So like now it's going up and it's more fun. And I have like kind of that same like community building up where i'll have people like commenting on my photos like shit like that will actually like want to talk to me and stuff like it's just more fun like environment it's just like more chillaxed have you been getting people from entertain facts that have found you and been like hey where have you been or anything no you should probably put a post out and being like hey this is the new entertain facts well it's in my bio it's also a private like i guess we could talk people don't understand so for meme pages like lots of meme pages are private Mm -hmm. and it's super annoying because if you dm someone a meme like it's private and you have to follow to see it Mm -hmm. And I noticed, like, once I was public, like, it was still, like, I was gaining, but it wouldn't be, like, consistent where I'd be, like, losing, like, I'd be gaining, like, three a day. But once I turned private, it was just gaining. Because if someone sent them my meme, instead of just, like, they'd be forced to follow. And, like, the, the majority of people would just follow it. 
and, and so it was just interesting. Like it just kept going up, and like just for the meme page, like that's the best. Like that's just a new way of learning for me because like back when I was doing Minecraft facts, like being private would like really make no sense because it's kind of like right. how are people gonna find? You? Yeah, exa- yeah, exactly. But like with this, like how it is now, being a meme page, if you're not private, it's probably like worse off. Weird. Mm-hmm. Are you finding that the memes themselves are generating more than the actual facts? Uh, no, because like memes again, like with facts, like it was just like more rewarding and just more fun to actually like go out and like look for facts and like find like crazy facts like no one would know about. Well, and it's it gains your own knowledge. Mm-hmm. Just you have this backpack now of knowledge of these random facts that you found. And it was just like, also like with facts, like, people would like if I had a, I remember I had a couple, like I know the one that I would repost like every couple of months just because it did well each time was the goodbye song to Michael in the office, like the mm. whatever like minute song. You that posted that twice. Hmm? Did you post that? You posted that twice. Didn't I you? think at least three times. Oh, mm-hmm. but it would, oh, each time it would get crazy amount of views because people would kept like sending it because like right. I knew like as a fact page like you have to know because like people don't give a fuck about a lot of these things. Right. So the big like the big ones for me were like obviously Marvel, but that was just more consistent. Yeah. But like Office facts, yep. like with a, like people love the Office. Well, I mean, not only that, if you would have gone back and did facts on like. Uh, Office, Friends, mm-hmm. How I Met Your Mother, Lost, mm-hmm. uh, Sopranos, The Wire, Breaking Bad, all of those things. Mm-hmm. Those are things that people like hold near and dear to them. Like, well, those How I Met Your Mother was fun. Oh, so you can finish your thought, though. No, no, for sure. But I was going to say, like, what you did with How I Met Your Mother, let's say, instead of converting to a meme page, mm-hmm. even though like you wanted to, let's say, if you were going to be like, I can't think of facts anymore, mm-hmm. if you would have just gone to like even uh, like any of those movies there, mm-hmm. Like, those are facts. Those are movies that people have seen, and they would love to see them. Like, if you do a fact on, like, a James Bond, mm-hmm. like, let's say you do a James Bond month, and you post facts about every James Bond or something. Like, because the beauty that you, that I noticed through How I Met Your Mother is that all you have to do is focus on that, and then mm-hmm. The Office. And those are so beloved by people that mm-hmm. they're going to want to know everything about mm-hmm. it. And they just want to see it. Like, I know for me, if I see anything with a Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, mm-hmm. I get so jazzed mm-hmm. if I see the Triforce, if I see red, blue, and green gems. I think of like the the sapphire, mm-hmm. the rubies, and all that. Like, it automatically makes me feel like I'm a young person, and that there's something about that game that just seeing a screenshot of it just makes me want to go and play it, so or you, watch it, or whatever. So, like, I would say like near the time how much mother I started posting about was like when I kind of like just started transitioning. Like, again, like I didn't want to do like like straight up just memes and just shit like that, but like. I just I want to say there were memes more like I just say there were more like video clips I'd post like for the most part. Yeah, you had like well I think the one it was like that South Park. Clip. Yeah, the South that Park was one was the worst one. one. Yeah, I know that was the one you got a lot of flack mm-hmm. for, which was like fair enough. I was just well, and that was the one. And see, I got frustrated and Nick got frustrated because mm-hmm. like you didn't see anything wrong with it. And well, I just thought it, honestly I will say but like honestly like, it was a clip from a show. I wasn't like endorsing. It. I'm just saying 100. it was a funny clip, but like yeah. I understood. I wasn't like saying oh you guys are in the wrong. I'm just saying it shouldn't be taken in like such a like. It's like comedy, like Dave Chappelle is kind of like that thing where it's kind of like, it's bad, but it's also like funny. No, it is for sure. But yeah, it's very dicey to post on like a public page. Well, and the, the big thing is, is that if they know, if they know what nationality you are mm-hmm. or what race you are, for instance, then posting something, especially now, that's mm-hmm. what was dicey about it. Like, that's what Nick and I were like telling you. We're like, dude, like. We get it. Well, I think I thought it was hilarious. I've mm-hmm. seen that episode. I know which one you're talking about. And it's funny, right? But to post it on your page, <coughs> excuse me, it's a very, very dicey proposition. I personally think that's what did it in. Mm-hmm. I don't think it was a copyright thing. No, I think they used dele- the copyright. I deleted that one, like yeah. very quickly too. It wasn't like a thing where it was up. Yeah. Like I think like it didn't even survive a full like twelve hours. And you okay? So you deleted mm-hmm. it. Yeah. So it hours. was like like there wasn't anyone like report. Like I remember there was another one I posted and someone said like. Do w after that like do WTF? I deleted it immediately. Yeah, like it was one of those things. I wasn't gonna make like a bitch about it, but well, it's hard too because like you're like, well, this is mine. I should be able to post whatever. Mm-hmm. But how? Ha- but the problem is, you have to suffer the consequences, mm-hmm. and that and that's a really tough thing too. Like even with um, YouTube, like a couple of videos I put up, there was there was de- there was cuts of those where I'll, I've taken things out because mm-hmm. I guess it could be a knock at my integrity at the time, but mm-hmm. I'm like. I just need to get this review out. I'm not here to cause shit. Mm-hmm. On this podcast, I don't give a flying fuck, mm-hmm. right? Like, my my concern is making sure that my arguments are at least valid in the way that I'm presenting them. What I like the more, like, not like 
political, but like just like more like actual like life where you can actually like discuss something. Like I like that's yeah. what like once we stopped doing the live shows and just started like focusing on like just talking about shit, it was just like more fun. Yeah, because we we were, it was about us. Mm-hmm. Like we we ended up talking about us and how these things are kind of interwoven into our lives, right? Um, and then again, so when we're talking entertain facts, that was like. You might downplay it, but that's a big thing mm-hmm. for sure, right? And it is a loss. Like, it's like losing – it's like – I don't know. It's it's like l- not losing a kid, obviously. But, like, you've built something from mm-hmm. scratch. You've gained your following. You have your groups of people. You had your little effers all over the place. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, it's all gone. That was the biggest thing. Like, the biggest thing I was mad about was the fact that I couldn't, like, just say, like, thank – because, honestly, like, I couldn't say, like, thank you or goodbye or, like – if they yeah. had told me, like, you have tonight and that's it, like, you're deleted, like, at this date. You do a 24-hour exactly. live show. Mm-hmm. I would say thank you so much for, like, all the support. Because, honestly, like, it was a crazy amount of support, like, for, like, doing yeah. just stupid shit. Well, and especially when it came to the live show itself, mm-hmm. like, by the end of it, we were actually getting... In the beginning, we were, I think we got pretty good, and then... But our video quality sucked on the live show. Well, Instagram video quality just fucking yeah. sucks. But then there was times where we'd get, like, 300 and some people, like, mm-hmm. just passing through, waving, saying hi or whatever, and then... From those 300, we get a bunch of people that would just stick around and be part mm-hmm. of the conversation, right? Mm-hmm. Again, guys like Arturo, KF, uh, mm-hmm. Bell. Um, there's a few other people Blake here and Jesse, there. Yeah, Blake no. and Jesse. I assume they don't listen to this, but in odd, odd case they do. Are they not listening to the podcast? That would be very. I think very Jesse bad. like occasionally listens to it. Like I guess if you don't, if, I guess if you don't listen to podcasts mm-hmm. or haven't gotten into the thing, which is really weird because like everybody listens to it. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, I I applied for this job a while back. And now I'm almost regretting it because I exclusively listen to podcasts, mm-hmm. except today. And I'll tell you why. My iPod Classic mm-hmm. still works. Hmm. 160 gigs. I've got 3,500 songs on it. I found it, and I thought it was busted because it wasn't turning yeah. on. The thing works, and she's a just thing dead. of beauty. I think it missed me, too, because the first 45 minutes I was playing it at work, because mm-hmm. at work now, I put on my headphones and I just work. Mm-hmm. It was playing all of these great songs that I've had for years. Mm. I love that thing. You know what I'm excited for the most, though, just in the future? Movie theater stories. Movie theater stories. Just working mean? there. Oh, Just yeah, all man. the shit that Dude, will go on. My friend Sean Hoff, mm-hmm. I think he's, I don't know if we we're friends anymore. I haven't talked to him for a while. I saw him a couple of years ago. He just recently got married. Um Good dude. One of the funniest fucking guys I've ever met in my life. He worked at the Galaxy when it first mm-hmm. opened. And he was a stud there. Like, uh, he organized video game nights there. Like, it was awesome. Like, mm-hmm. playing rock band and Guitar Hero on the big mm-hmm. screen. Like, amazing, right? We would go there late night, 12 o'clock, one, like 1 o'clock when it's mm-hmm. closing down. And he would open up all the, the arcade games. And, like, you just press that little button and you'd get credits for... We probably had two hours of credits. Mm-hmm. And we would sit there and play, like, House of the Dead 2 for hours and Watch. he would just hook us up and they were so good it was so fun there oh my god i wonder if like what the arcade at landmark will be like i never really thought about that you think you can get us in the grand opening and we can do like an f entertain facts or not sorry an f word like thing we'll see how good we'll see the relationship with the boss the boss that i'm pretty sure like liked me like the general manager's guy who actually interviewed me and he seemed like he actually really liked me does he know anything about what we're doing i think I don't. I don't know. I never like really like. Actually, yes, I did because I remember I brought up like the like realtor. Like, if anyone asks me about like how I can market, like it kind of mm. like goes hand in hand. So I like say, well, what you know about movies? Like, I do like weekly podcasts, like uh, just stuff like that. I think he knows, but this is an idea I had, mm-hmm. and I, I and I think it's better that I say it right now. It might work. We set up a booth mm-hmm. at opening nights of places, mm-hmm. or let's say like the Friday night. We've already seen the movie. Let's say on a Thursday, mm-hmm. and we get people to sit down and give us the review of the movie they just saw mm-hmm. and we just do a collection of them and we release like a 25 minute clip of mm-hmm. us talking to people that are reviewing the movies oh it could be like one of those like charlie kirk things where he goes to like college campuses and no that's just, that's uh, steven crowder where he does the change my minds or does charlie kirk do charlie that too? Kirk does too yeah I see. crowder does the mm-hmm. change my mind which is like a meme which is super mm-hmm. funny but like instead of that be like how was your movie and then people would come in sit down we would record them giving us a review of their movie and then they would leave so then the reviews are not about us giving reviews the reviews are actually from people that are going to see the movie like we have sponsorship okay well, I think that might work it. we'll see if I'm doing if I'm doing really good I might have to bring it up like hey yo man you want to do business a bit more hey that'd be great can you imagine being sponsored by a movie theater that would work that, oh my god free tickets the even problem is theaters will have free tickets anyway okay so before we get to there or no as we're leading to there so uh, Entertain Facts is now 
unfortunately dead. Mm -hmm. The podcast is still going because so mm -hmm. far no one there's I don't think there's anything that could shut us down really because we haven't no podcast actually it's really hard to get your podcast taken down for copyright even yeah. though we have nothing like relatively like, yeah. to get copyrighted for so then this is going to bleed into like I guess the history of F because mm -hmm. then obviously like I mentioned before F E F comes from entertained facts mm -hmm. and we finally were able so the big mistake the biggest mistake I think we ever made was the fact that we didn't do the casual moviegoers model Mm -hmm. first because now we can't yeah no because we well we'll see how long he's uh gone for i don't know two months might be time to pick up that shit well the thing with me is that we we made such a big mistake early on first of all we didn't know about anchor and i don't know if anchor was even around second of all for some reason i thought because i wasn't listening to regular podcasts mm -hmm. oh this is totally random we talked about jobs. I applied for this new job, and I'm worried about getting it because I won't have enough time to listen to the podcast I listen to every day. That's mm -hmm. what the whole thing of that. I just realized that I completely left that. But anyways, where was I now? You're talking about Back. casual movie go or big mistake we made. Biggest mistake. So we got into YouTube way too early. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't have even touched YouTube. Mm -hmm. What we should have done is what casual did mm -hmm. because we spent the whole time trying to transfer over the Instagram followers, because at the time, I think it was 40 or 50 when we started. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We tried to get the 40 or 50 followers, 50,000 followers, to go onto YouTube and watch our YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. Like a bunch of idiots. And instead of being like, wait a minute, they're right there. We could have just made clips there of our reviews of stuff. Mm -hmm. Done. If IGTV was around, I think it would have been like super ideal, like back at the start, because like... Obviously, like taking reviews and just because like, that whole podcast perspe perspective would be out because you're actually like you can't actually discuss like it's just like bullet point like shit like just. Well, well but mm -hmm. the thing was though is that a lot of the reviews we end up whittling down from like mm -hmm. s I think the original the first ones were like ten minutes. Well, aside from the couple homecoming of video games, was like our longest well, one. But the homecoming was just a podcast. Mm -hmm. That's why. So the that one is still up on YouTube. Those were fun, though. Like, when we just watch a movie and just immediately go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we used to do, right? And, and it was fun, like, mm -hmm. and especially when I was living here. Mm -hmm. Now that I live at Soap, yeah. it's a little bit more of a pain in the ass. But we made the mistake of not doing that and not just sticking to Instagram mm -hmm. and using video on Instagram because we could do stuff in a minute. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, right? Because, again, we were whittling it down to get more and it make it easier because we were working off with shitty laptops, mm -hmm. so that didn't help either. And then the other mistake was... Not a mistake, but we didn't know what Anchor was, and we were working off Libsyn, and we had no idea about any of that stuff. We had the equipment. I just was still learning how to use it. Mm -hmm. We got onto YouTube too early, and the show that we have now is the show that we should have started with, mm -hmm. like that fucking type of show that... I think we just took it way too fucking seriously at the start. Well, it was just like really yeah. like stiff. And I don't understand why. I think... I don't understand why we formatted it that way. Because then that format ended up turning into... I remember those first videos where this wall was just blue and mm -hmm. I wasn't able to get the camera angle proper, so it was like this big blue background. And then the camera that we have was only doing 12 minutes at a time. And, yeah, I know. And that's, that's super shitty. And it's still super shitty. And I think a lot of them still do... Like, they do that. Well, just a processing card, I think. Well, no, because I changed... I bought four mm -hmm. different memory cards. It's the actual cameras themselves so there's another type of camera that could just keep going and mm -hmm. going we could have very well done it on our phones though mm -hmm. with the what, what we were doing well i couldn't because my phone is an iphone and it had 32 fucking gigabytes of storage oh. and that was the biggest issue i came across with entertain facts i always had less than a gigabyte available of storage at all well, times well the, the thing is though is that we don't need that many gigs of storage we can just delete the, like mm -hmm. we just need to transfer it because I know you mentioned it now because I said, I'm like, well, let's just do video with our phones because we can actually get it closer and, mm -hmm. and it'll be a lot better. Even for storage wise, we just transfer it over and delete it from the phone and then just have it on the computer. We could still play around with that. But it was so like. The problem was we never rebranded in terms of starting over until we got onto Anchor. Mm hmm. And even when we got onto Anchor, we were still doing the format as before. Like even the titles of our first ones were like. Spider-Man, James Gunn, this and more, mm -hmm. and this and more. And I think I don't even think we started on like episode one. I think it was like episode twelve. Mm. And also our whole episodic thing is way out of whack. So I'm gonna wait till we get to a hundred and then we'll get into season two. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which I don't even think season two will be a thing. Or I'll just keep it going and it'll mm -hmm. just 
I think season, like if we structure it, honestly, we should just like look and see if anyone wants to be our camera guy. You know what I would love to have? A camera person Mm -hmm. and then someone to take down notes of when things are going on. Mm -hmm. Because I was like like, thinking about that too, like in my head, like last week. Like like an intern. mm -hmm. Yeah. Like just like keeping notes on my phone, like topics and like timeline wise, just like a rough estimate of like where it would be. Well, and I keep forgetting, like I write them down, like the list that I Mm -hmm. send you guys or when I remember to send you guys. And that's what I'm trying to like get the con like the thing to go right mm-hmm. and the title now instead of it being the topics i've been finding i think we've been getting cons- more consistent views not huge spikes in views but more consistent views with the actual names of the titles because mm-hmm. they're i think we're getting better at them like between you me and my brother mm-hmm. like we're coming up with interesting titles well, just more punny like more, more yeah, yeah exactly <clears throat> and they're ones that i'm hoping are drawing people in but at the same time like even with this fucking thing like some episodes are doing good some episodes mm-hmm. don't like last week we ended up having like 25 or 30 mm-hmm. listens. that was a good episode though it was a really good mm-hmm. ep- not last week sorry the week before okay. the bad boys episode mm-hmm. but then i look at other people on instagram they only have they're only on episode 26 and they're getting 400 and 500 views on their mm-hmm. shit and i'm like we're we've hit some type of a of a weird ceiling and it mm-hmm. always seems like we're always just we're on the right track on something but we just haven't found that trick to break out. So then when you're talking Instagram and anybody listening that wants to start an Instagram thing and you're saying it's hashtags, Mm -hmm. aside from the issues that we had for a young up-and-coming Instagrammer or even for our stuff, Mm -hmm. then what do you think is going to work now with the new ways of Instagramming? So for my thing, like just I guess like how I overcame my entertain facts, like the biggest thing was a consistency and uploading consistent consistency and quality was the biggest thing because like all my posts like they just looked visually appealing they just looked good they drew you in and they also like my page was like very consistent where like I I would post memes at night like actual just like memes I'd steal but I always delete them in the morning just so like visually it just looked like one thing mm-hmm. I think also a big thing that lots of people do is they try and be someone else or they try and like just copy someone else or like do stuff that way and the thing I always said because I remember someone changed their name to entertainment hub or entertain hub i've seen that page yeah. before entertain hub and they like had a logo similar to mine i told them like you know what like you can use it if you want but like just think about this like no one would want to follow you if you're gonna be, just be a secondhand me because i'm still here it's free to follow me i'm like no i said like i sound like a dick but it was like i made sure like he didn't take it offensively like he like actually liked that stuff i was giving him mm-hmm. so if you're gonna like the biggest thing is if you're gonna try and be like someone else just know that if that someone else is still active, why would they use you? You know what he needed to do? He needed to have Entertain Hub, mm-hmm. and it should have been an entertaining page about Pornhub. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a missed opportunity. That's the route that they should have gone and just wow. find, like, just search the internet the for comments. any type of, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, you know what I see? Nicola Shea's boobs are this much in diameter, and. <laughs> but it's just one of those things, like, the biggest issue. Is just people keep like just trying to copy other people, or they try like make shortcuts, like going on someone's page and like asking for followers. I would always go off on these people, like no remorse. Yeah. And my the biggest thing I loved is that my followers, even stuff I wouldn't even have to initiate it. My followers would sometimes roast a fuck to the point where I have to like say, "Okay, guys, like it's done, like you it's had done." An army. Like, it was. Yeah. A, I remember there's a twenty thread comment, mm-hmm. flaming the fuck. And this person usually they'll they'll delete their comments. Like, after I would, like, roast people, they delete their comment just, you know, like, so, you know, they kind of get attacked. This person refused to delete it and just got destroyed. And I just, like, you know what? I DM'd him saying, like, listen, like, you know, it's all for fun because, like, even if I did roast someone, like, I'd always, like, make sure, like, they didn't take it personally or, like, just saying, you know, I'm just, like, fucking You don't you. leave them battered and bloodied mm-hmm. on the on the yeah, floor. No. You, you kind of make sure that they're good and they can go mm-hmm. to the hospital on their own and everything. It's, like, dealing with, like, uh, little Stelio. Like, I'll roast the fuck out of him, but I'll say, you know, man, I'm just joking. I'm just fucking with you and, like, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, that's just... That's what I missed them. Honestly, the thing I missed the most is just the community. Like that was it. Well, it was that's fun. what you built, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's what I miss about the live show. Mm-hmm. Even though I always liked it when we didn't do the live show for the very reason. That's why these deep dives came out because mm-hmm. I didn't have to worry about cameras. I didn't have to worry about anything. Just sitting down and talking to one person or two people mm-hmm. or whatever. Like, and we were we pigeonholed ourselves too. Mm-hmm. Like we because I was copying other pod or other not podcasts but YouTube channels. So I was using what I've seen from Collider. And some of the stuff from Screen Junkies and like their format and applying it to our stuff, which when I, I, I can remember how we sounded or mm-hmm. how I sounded. 
and it was like no swearing, mm-hmm. no no uh, no names. Yeah, no I don't know cursing, what happened. I remember we were stuff. very adamant about not swearing, and like it wasn't even like a smooth transition. It was just one time we just started going, and it yeah. just never went back. And it, was it, it was, but like that's not how we talk. Mm-hmm. The, and the the interesting thing is my YouTube videos were more me mm-hmm. than the podcast was, and I remembered it was it was I think it was like the holidays or something, and my buddies or my brother's friends Spencer, yeah Spencer and Jordian were in town, and they're like, hey man, like I've seen some of your videos or whatever, like it sounds like really good, it's cool because it actually sounds like you, mm-hmm. like it sounds like. It is G who's telling me. It's not G pretending to be somebody else. Because I remember at that point I transitioned. And, like, I was modeling our reviews mm-hmm. off of Jeremy John's because mm-hmm. I did like the cuts. I liked the cold opens. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I liked doing the cuts because, A, most of the videos ended up being, like, 18 minutes. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to release an 18-minute yeah, no. video because a lot of it was, like, pauses and me mm-hmm. screwing up and having to start over again. And, B, I, I like watching that. So... Mm-hmm. I think what happened is we started to slowly transition to doing a show we we would watch or mm-hmm. listen to. Yeah. But <coughs> it didn't mean you and I didn't get into our tiffs. Mm-hmm. I think the big one ended up the ended off the best way because we were arguing a lot because you well, were. This is, I think it was a big power struggle. I think that's like the biggest thing. And I just kinda like realized like, you know, I don't really care at this point. Like Well, we were both caring for for two different reasons. So and the thing is, we were separating the priorities. Mm-hmm. You were focused on your followers, mm-hmm. but we weren't gaining them for a while. Mm-hmm. And we were talking like, if you go back and look at some of those YouTube videos, we started doing our polls, mm-hmm. like the polls of like top mm-hmm. five movies oh, yeah. and top ten this. Um, the news show was split up into two. Mm-hmm. We were doing all sorts of stuff to try to appeal it. We did that Fight Club thing. Mm-hmm. We did the. Um, we did that. Uh, was the Fight Club the one where it was Batman versus Kevin McAllister oh, yeah. and Superman versus Goku? That's the one. And then we did the um, sorry, my headphones. And then we did the quiz show, mm-hmm. and like I made those pedestals and stuff, mm-hmm. which was fun to do, right? And I got the stickers made and yeah. everything like that. But like we were so divided on what the fuck we wanted mm-hmm. to do, and it ended up being worse and worse. So then eventually, I just took over the YouTube stuff, mm-hmm. and was super protective like i was super protective mm-hmm. of that and the podcast and then i was begrudgingly doing the stuff for the instagram followers aside from the live show because i actually enjoyed the live mm-hmm. show but like we were so divided until i remember i i remember how it was resolved i said we are in a situation where it's kevin feige and pearl mutter mm-hmm where you have the movie production side of things and I've got the TV stuff mm-hmm. and or where I'm we're operating separately like that as opposed to try to move it together. Mm-hmm. And I think that actually helped because well A it helped because it helped diffuse that mm-hmm. type of argument that we had because that's kind of what it's been, right? Like mm-hmm. it's like this is how I want things to go, no this is how I think they should go. And I guess that happens when people are like really creative. Mm-hmm. And then I was taking ownership of it because of two reasons. One, I was doing all the work, mm-hmm. but I was doing all the work because I didn't bother to let anybody in on the work. Mm-hmm. If that makes it, yeah. That's that's what I ended up figuring out mm-hmm. where it's like, I wanted it to be a certain way, so I completely took control of everything. Uh, you and I had gone 50-50 on the cash mm-hmm. to buy the cameras and mm-hmm. the, the microphones and all that. And uh, yeah, a little update, we haven't gotten any money from this, so mm-hmm. cha-ching. Um, and then we were, I don't know, I honestly don't remember what exactly the transition point was, but I think that realization of we are now in two different spots. You're the head of Disney because the F word is like is the underneath entertain mm-hmm. facts, right? So if you were to look at a network, it's like entertain facts is at the very top mm-hmm. of this pyramid, and then you draw two little lines, let's say, and then you'd have the F word and then the YouTube channel, like mm-hmm. the podcast and YouTube. Yeah. But the parent company was the F word. Mm-hmm. So I was fighting against the parent company, which I've been in situations like that before. Mm-hmm. And that was our biggest thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you have anything up until that point. Not really, <sighs> but like just overall, just like content wise, like I think there's a point, like just like it was like 
I wouldn't say like fairly. Like, it was a couple months ago, like around six months ago, where just like the podcast was like wasn't like just fun to even like do. Mm-hmm. But then we just like branched off and we just start talking about like actual like just like it was more just casual where we just like didn't give a fuck. Like you didn't have to like just wa- you have to watch the trailer. Like, that was all you had to really do. Like prior mm-hmm. to we'd like do research and like it was just more like professional but like once we started talking about just like life stories and just like bringing things and we got to like just like stop giving a fuck that we like where we live and just like talking about where we live and shit like that it became more fun like it was more like joe rogan based where i could see like i would be watching the shit we were talking about like if it was cut up into things like i would actually watch it yeah man mm-hmm. well even that clip that you put together like mm-hmm. it was it was a good clip and like even some of those shorter clips that i was doing before mm-hmm. um where i was releasing them like we were commenting on trailers, so I find that mm-hmm. section yeah. and put it up and stuff, which I'm I'm gonna do. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna start doing the video though with the camera mm-hmm. because I can at least take one fucking piece together and that's it. I might go buy a stand or like a, a stand for your camera mm-hmm. phone to prop it up or whatever. But uh, we'll see how that's gonna work. And that's the biggest thing is that whoa, just got the shivers for some reason. We st- we finally are doing the show that we were supposed to do. Like this is the show that's actually no pun intended, entertaining. Mm -hmm. Like, this is the stuff that we... This is where I've said for a while now where it doesn't matter if it doesn't go anywhere, even though, yeah, it's frustrating when you see other people that are new to it Mm -hmm. and they're they're already at 500 or 400, like, people listens Mm -hmm. per episode. Yeah. And we've been doing this for a long time, but the thing was is I'm I'm trying to think of the fact that we've changed so much even since we started on Anchor Mm -hmm. that... Anybody that started listening to us in our first few episodes where when you look at the numbers, there was actually quite a bit of people. Mm -hmm. Those people either left because they didn't like the change or people came in and then left because they didn't like what was going on there. Mm -hmm. And I almost feel like we should have just restarted. But at the same time, I'm like, whatever. At this point, because we've not scrapped YouTube, but we're just doing the audio and we've Mm -hmm. streamlined everything. I could give a flying fuck. I'm just doing this because like it's fun. Mm-hmm. It's I fun think, now. So for the phone, I have a stand you can use. Like it's one of those gorilla pods that you just kind of like zoom in or zoom as long as you okay. just tap in. It, we're, like, it we'd have to do the same thing we do with the uh, like iPad though, and like actually like prop it up on something like just like oh, okay. height wise. But like, yeah, yeah. yeah next week we can, can do, do that if you want. Yeah. But I think once I get adjusted to university, and like the, I think videos are honestly like just a way to go. Like for monetization at least, and just like at least like. Getting a more mainstream audience because, like, mm-hmm. podcasts, like, I think we have a good podcast, but, like, not lots of people just, like, listen to podcasts. Well, and I, I, I just think there's not just that. I think also people haven't found us yet. Well, that's what I was going to say. Like, not like they don't listen to us. Yeah. They just don't, like, they don't listen to podcasts. They just, like, you have a, like, select, like, podcast to choose from. Like, if you're going to, like, what podcast should I watch? Joe Rogan, like, popular, like, fucking podcasts. The, someone had put up on Instagram the Podfather. Mm-hmm. You know? Exactly, yeah. Like, there's just stuff like that. So it's hard for podcast. It's very hard to even get noticed, which I think like Joe Rogan, I, I'm going to like say, I don't know the stats wise, but I'm like guaranteeing the videos draw a lot of people to his podcast. For sure. And I'm not going to say like the opposed to the his podcast clips. drawing people to the like videos. Well, even if you look at his clips, like he'll, he'll so he'll release the mm-hmm. whole episode, yeah. right? Whether it's two or three hours, just like we do, but now we're doing it audio before mm-hmm. we were doing it in video. Um, then his clips are what? are huge mm-hmm. that's why everybody's doing clips yeah but you know why because they work mm-hmm. like a- doing clips actually works and then it'll draw you to mm-hmm. there and then we just input the rest of it and i think the way you edited them are a way for us to like stand out so mm-hmm. it is kind of how youtube is going mm-hmm. like our people are doing it however they're clips that are working for the podcast mm-hmm. and it's like i th- I, th- I don't know the way that you did that last video i think perfectly summarized how we are Mm -hmm. and what kind of feel you're getting now and i think that's why we had so many listens on that last one i think for the style of it i think there'll be two styles i like focus on like one will be like that one where it's like edit like heavy and if it's like for example from last week like the monopoly discussion I think I just like straight up just release it, like, yeah. like no edits, just like that. Yeah, which, which, is, which like, is totally fine. Too. Saturday, well, it's not going to be like kind of outdated, but I just think it's still, like a good discussion either way. Like I'll just like kind of like edit and just like honestly just straight up like post it. Well, I think the thing is, is now we don't have to worry too much about when like when you get them done, mm-hmm. as long as they come out, right? Mm-hmm. Like I don't think it matters because we'll just reference it. Hey, this was from our latest episode. If you haven't mm-hmm. heard it, we got a new episode coming out. But whatever, go back and listen to that other one, right? Based on this clip. Um, because even Rogan's clips come out after the whole thing comes mm-hmm. out, if I remember correctly. Yeah, no. 
Uh, so, you know, I just think now, and for anybody listening, because this is kind of like a, like this is a cool little deep dive on just just that inner workings of stuff behind the scenes, and like the fact that we've had our meetings, and I remember that last meeting we had. I think it was around the holidays that we mm-hmm. wrote a bunch of shit down. Mm-hmm. We did none of it, mm-hmm. but I'm glad that we did it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Especially the one where we were like, "Oh, let's go try to get ourselves onto like a, a, a local radio mm-hmm. station or whatever." I hate, especially now, the older that I'm getting, I hate being told what to do. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I dislike it unless it's work and I understand it. But mm-hmm. like, if someone were to come in and be like, "Listen, I'll pay you guys each two grand a month mm-hmm. to do your podcast," so we have two scenarios: one person saying he's going to pay us two grand, three grand a month, which is mm-hmm. you know. A lot. Like a lot of money, right? Mm-hmm. Each to do your podcast. However, no swearing. It has to be this. It has to be that or that. Or a guy that's going to be like, well, I'll pay you guys like 500 a month each and you do whatever. You just keep doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. I will take the 500 every day because this is now a space where it's like it's it's not a safe space. It's my, It's our space. It's our hangout. And and the and the thing surrounding it is the fact that if you listen to us, I'm hoping. And this is what I was super excited about when the guy messaged me back, and he's like, "Dude, he's like, what you guys have is really good. Mm-hmm. Like, a that's super nice mm-hmm. to hear. Is that what you're putting out, regardless on if a lot of people are listening to? When somebody does listen to it, that's been in around the podcast game for a while, says something like that. It's like, oh, we're doing something right, but we're also doing something wrong because not a lot of people are listening to it. Mm-hmm. But they perfectly described what both versions were. Mm-hmm. So they're like, the deep dive is that Joe Rogan style where you're, you're interviewing one or two people or whatever. Mm-hmm. And the regular weekly podcast, he's like, it sounds like you're hanging out with your friends just talking about stuff that you would talk about. I'm like, that's exactly what we were going mm-hmm. with. Like, come into our audio basement mm-hmm. and just hang out. And, I, and the ones that I like listening to kind of have that feel. Well, I think just the biggest thing, like especially like, and t- obviously the opportunity hasn't arose or arised for like to get paid arisen arisen to get like paid 500 but like yeah. even though like because think about it, like going from making zero to 500 and you can still do whatever the fuck you want mm-hmm. is one thing like, it's like great but if you can get paid 2000 it's like a temporary pay because eventually the show is just gonna suck ass and it'll be stale as fuck because like even in that sentence i think i swore quite a lot oh for sure mm-hmm. yeah well and, and it's not even the swearing part of it like this is where i find a lot of people are having issues with um, with with people being like, oh well, why do you have to swear? It's not about having to swear. It's the fact that when you implement one restriction, mm-hmm. it never just starts at one restriction. There's this whole thing going on in Canada right now where it's there's the the um, the bill on pro- pronouns and stuff, mm-hmm. oh. and there's people that there's are fighting against it. C sixteen. Okay, what is C-16? Um, it's passed, but I don't think they've implemented it yet. Mm-hmm. So it's compelled speech. It's a compelled speech act to make sure that you use the right pronouns. Okay. That's what it is. Now, that sounds fine on the surface, but one of the guys fighting against it was Jordan Peterson, who I'm a huge fan of because I know what he's talking about mm-hmm. because I read his stuff and I know, like all those intellectuals that people are branding dangerous individuals – he is not ta- he doesn't care if so he's actually said this if someone comes up to me and says i am transgender i would like to be called this way mm-hmm. he will call you that way obviously he's a psych- he's an, he's one of the like the smartest guys out there mm-hmm. and so he'll know if you're also legitimate or not or mm-hmm. if you're trying to go Just him into doing to, yeah. to, to saying something and then you go after him his argument is the fact that the government shouldn't start compelling our speech on anything because it's not going to start with the gender pronouns. Mm-hmm. Or sorry, it's not going to end with it. It's going to start with these pronouns that a small collective is making a large amount of noise for. Mm-hmm. And then it's going to start turning into other things. Mm-hmm. And so once you start compelling people's speech, that means that you're compelling people's thoughts because mm-hmm. thoughts... Sorry, speech comes from what you're thinking. Mm-hmm. So then, this is another thing that's been going on. They're actually doing gender bias training, or uh, re- uh, bias training in with lawyers in Ontario. I think they're still doing it, where they'll actually do a test, which this test has failed the second time across the board. It's mm-hmm. not even something that 
works, mm-hmm. but they're implementing it to see if there's any bias, racial biases or anything like that. Hmm. Where I'm going with this is once there's s- s- over, there's people overreaching like government like this mm-hmm. that are compelling you to do one thing, they will have the power to keep going and going and going. And that's what a lot of these people that are calling for this bill to go through that are thinking they're doing it just for this. Mm-hmm. One day it's going to go into a territory that they didn't want it to be. Mm-hmm. And then we can easily look at them and be like, well, because you did this, it equaled that. Mm-hmm. And the more I've been listening to a lot of these people talk of all, like I've listened to people who are contractors of Peterson that are cohorts of Peterson, like all sorts mm-hmm. of stuff. Like right now, the stuff that I'm listening to, I have no idea what to think. All I know is how to think. Mm-hmm. And so if someone was to come here and offer us that amount of money, it's not going to start with just the swear words. Mm -hmm. Then they're going to come with a script. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to come with uh, a bunch of demands because they brought on a new investor that wants us to say Mm -hmm. all sorts of things. I'm not concerned with this SAS podcast network yet, but I have mentioned this on uh, another podcast I did with somebody else Mm -hmm. called The Story of You, like they were interviewing me. It's not out yet, is it? No. No. I said, my only concern... Oh, and I also think talked about it with my last deep dive on Hollywood Trends. My only concern is when they decide to say that, A, we're, sh- we're like filling all these ads, right? Mm-hmm. Now we have Conexus. Mm-hmm. And it's fun right now or whatever. But even with Rogan's, the first six minutes of his podcast is him doing ads. Mm-hmm. But that's how you get paid, right? Yeah. So there's going to have to be a balance of those ads. But when the if, if the network does come here and say, hey been getting some complaints of you guys swearing or saying Mm -hmm. this or whatever or that you know you guys are talking about controversial stuff and um you guys are just openly saying it that's when i'm gonna be like Mm bye-bye yeah no i'm saying that right now and i don't know how you feel about this because now i mean i'm gonna obviously talk to you guys about Mm -hmm. it but well here's like the thing is like obviously like we're not like implying the sask podcast network would ever do it sure but it's like just one of those things where like a if the mutual gain of being a part of it isn't like meeting like or the is it like if you're not gaining anything from being a part of it and they want you to like do all these changes that would like take away yeah. then there's no point of actually being a part of it and if they're going to ask you to censor yourself like we've talked about it on the show how we hate the fact that you know people are like being censored or you're getting like labeled racist if you just oppose people which is like one of those things where we like go back and just kind of like kneel down just being a bitch and you're kind of like going against your own word Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'd a hundred percent be on board just because a we have a show where like, like no offense to the SAS podcast network, but like as of now, like, if they were to come up to us tomorrow and say that, we're not actually gaining anything off of them, like anything like, monumental. Nothing yet. Yeah, no. it's still in its soft launch. Exactly. So. Like it's like, but I guess to be like more fair, like if say CBS came to us and said the same thing, like you need to like censor yourself, like no, like we're good. Yeah, like, we've survived this long. Like the the only thing I would say is if someone said, hey, we just want you to do reviews on our radio station, for instance. Mm-hmm. And just go in there and do a quick like five ten minute review. Mm-hmm. Sure, that doesn't change the show. It's an it's an extra part of it. Mm-hmm. Then like the one day, like hey Anthony, you go saw this movie, go see it, or tell my brother to go, or mm-hmm. I'll go, or fuck if Nick, you know, if Nick finds some free time so he can oh, come he back. Oh, he works at a fucking radio station. Well, exactly. Like, but it's if they do something like that, then I'd be like, sure, mm-hmm. as long as it doesn't affect what we're doing here, because after so many years, mm-hmm. it's come like we finally found a good kind mm-hmm. of balance, and I think. I think now anybody that's started listening, I, th- I would say the past four months, mm-hmm. at least, mm-hmm. um, if they've started, then I, th- I'm hoping, I'm thinking that they're getting a good program because, like, I've, you know, even our tour, when I, I ask them all the time, mm-hmm. like, I get feedback from our tour. I'm like, hey, how was it? How was this? It's like, oh, dude, he's like, it's always fun. Like, I just mm-hmm. feel like I'm, st- I'm in there, even if you guys aren't doing the live show. Mm-hmm. He's, I'm like, I'm, I'm, we're going to try to figure that out. We might do it on Facebook a couple times. Mm-hmm. If we do it, who knows? But I get feedback from him. I get feedback from anybody that's listened or has been on it. My deep dives, like, I'm gonna, like I don't know if I'll be able to send it to you. Usually what I do is mm-hmm. I send it to the person, and I have mm-hmm. them review it, and then I send it out. But that's because I know you, and we've well, done this for so Well, I'm treating a regular podcast. Like it's fun. Yeah. But the cool thing, what I like about this one the most is that, like, it's just even more relaxed, mm-hmm. whereas the news one, where, you know, the main one, it's the main show and we're just talking about a bunch of stuff and new stuff where this is just you just kind of roll with well, whatever. Like, uh that's the thing too that i've noticed like lately like the timeline like previously when it was more structured i could feel like it would just be longer but the fact that we've been going for like 
just under two hours. Like the only reason I know how long it is is because my ass is fucking killing me. Oh, it is. Other than that, it's, it's like, okay, just we'll going like very soon. quickly. Yeah, man. Well, and that's what I found even with our regular podcast too. Mm-hmm. Like it goes by quick. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that one's tough because I have to watch the time a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But with these ones, yeah, like the the one that we did for for Endgame, mm-hmm. it's longer than the movie. Mm-hmm. And just by the fact that we didn't even realize what time it was. Mm-hmm. And so, and these are the types of stuff that, like, this is where the show is able to actually kind of grow, I think. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for, I I would say the only thing that would be linking, not the only thing, but the thing that we could link for sure, like your history with Entertain Facts, and then how it's bled into the F word, mm-hmm. and how hopefully the F word can bleed into something else, like I'll build up the lazy mm-hmm. Canadian. Um all of that stuff, uh, like and now with the clips, mm-hmm. that's what it, that's the next phase, right? Mm-hmm. Is that like, I'm just glad we never stopped. Well, I don't think it was really like a like point where like any of us actually like openly discussed like stopping it. Yeah. Like I'm sure like everyone's had like thoughts of doing it. Like mm-hmm. I have, no, like I don't care. I've had the ones where I'm like, what's the point? Mm-hmm. Because like, uh, like I said, those times where it was like I was getting super upset, mm-hmm. and when we stopped doing YouTube, I'm like, is there even a point to doing something that doesn't seem to be exponentially growing? Mm-hmm. But then I'm, but then I'm thinking, because there's there's a thing in economics called the sunk cost fallacy. Mm-hmm. So when you've invested so much into something that you're not willing to put it away, just by sheer virtue of putting so much time into it mm-hmm. or money, um, people do that at like a slots. Mm-hmm. Like, well, I've already put like two hundred bucks. Like, it's got a hit. Or at a restaurant that's bleeding money. It's like, but I've invested so much money. Mm-hmm. Or my real estate career where I invested so much money that a lot of it I didn't have at the time, but I needed to do it to see if I could help generate it. And I was not willing to leave when I should have left two, three years ago. Mm-hmm. But that's a sunk cost. But I guess it comes down to what entertain facts was for you and what the F word is for us. Mm-hmm. Where when you lost entertain facts, it was at a time where things were shitty, but mm-hmm. it was almost like a weight had was lifted. Well, that's like, so like in that, like, I guess in the aspect like, in the summer, there was, like, a time where I was like, you know what? Like, this is fucking stupid. Like, yeah, like, I want Entertain Facts back, like, obviously. Mm-hmm. Like, once things died down, and, like, literally in the summer, it, it was dead. Like, I had yeah. no job. Just a bum. Literally, I woke up, worked out, and that was it. That mm-hmm. was my life. Wake up, work out, sleep. And that was it. And just hang out. That's the dream mm-hmm. for some people. Oh, it sucked. But I fucking hate it. <laughs> I hate it so much. Like, if I'm, like, married, and I'm, like, my wife's making $500 million a year. And I just want to be a stay-at-home husband. Could not fucking do it. Well, if you have kids, you might. Well, yeah, but still, I don't know. With, yeah, but it's just like being by yourself, like that'd be awful. I'd Dude, when it. when we were doing YouTube and I was trying to pump out as many videos, mm-hmm. I was barely even showing houses. Mm. I was sitting in this basement, binging shows as fast as I possibly could, so I can get a review as fast as I possibly mm-hmm. could. And it was, I was miserable. Mm-hmm. But anyways. That's pretty much it. That was the end of my thought. That was it. Yeah, no. It was like, of course, like, honestly, like, I might try again, but it's just one of those things where the Lazy Canadian is very fun to do, and I have, like, things where, like, I have a video idea. Like, that doesn't really matter because I don't think majority of my followers listen to this podcast, but I want to do, like, a surprise video for October 15th because that's, like, four-year anniversary. It's, like, just oh, a yeah. funny video. Like, what the, like, where have I been? Like, what have I been doing for, like, the, like, time has been dead and just stuff like that and just kind of, like, do a funny, just stupid video. Well, that's what I did when we first, uh, when we kind of got back into mm-hmm. YouTube. I did that one video just saying, hey, guys, it's been a while or whatever. Mm-hmm. Shit hit the fan. And because I remember just before we stopped doing YouTube, uh, my buddy's brother died and I was at that mm-hmm. funeral and Soph's nephew died. Yeah, no, it was a fucking like bad week. Yeah. And Soph's 15 year old mm-hmm. nephew died yeah, that was... and my buddy's 35 year old brother. Like, mm-hmm. And I went to both those funerals and it was back to back. It was fucked up because mm-hmm. both of them were freak accidents and mm-hmm. I was I was waiting for the third like that's when you did the friendship breakers uh mm. episode was it I think that yeah. would have been like because I was behind the scenes because I would I didn't oh. I didn't want to go on camera because I'd just come back from the one funeral okay. um really fuck that doesn't that seems like way longer I know fuck. that was last year yeah, no I didn't want to seem like last year yeah man and gl- like what's awesome is that so my buddy who lost his brother mm-hmm. Like, he's getting married. That's whose wedding I'm going to. Okay. So it'll be, like, pretty incredible to mm-hmm. just kind of go there. And it's going to be super emotional because his brother's not there. Mm-hmm. But we're actually celebrating something with the family that they can, you know, be happy for. Because mm-hmm. at least, like, the immediate family. The cousins, yeah. though, the one cousin got married last year. And that was a lot of fun. But, mm-hmm. you know, this one's going to be a big, big mm-hmm. one, right? Um, 
But anyways, all of that stuff hit. And then my real estate career was even tanking even more. Mm-hmm. One could argue is because I was spending my time binge watching so I can do YouTube. Mm-hmm. But I thought one of them was going to take off. Mm-hmm. Right. Now we're just in the stride. And now you've kind of hit mm-hmm. a more relaxing stride. Mm-hmm. But it's almost like it, they come when they're supposed to. Yeah, no, that's the, th- the thing for me, like how much your mother quotes, like one of those things. I just like kind of if I think I ever stresses me out, I just kind of like think about these quotes like Ted Mosby saying, like, or I think it was like sometimes things need to break apart to like make place or better things. So like with entertainment yeah. is dying, I was kind of like, OK, well, whatever, like something's coming up next. Yep. And then there was one that was like, I forget what it was. I know there's one I kind of like think about a lot is like when Ted Mosby had that like bad year like the worst year of his life when he got punched in the, like yeah, when, everything when he did the leap mm-hmm. yeah the, he's the, like, the, the like, leap in the other balcony he's like but damn if it wasn't like the best year of my life and like yeah. honestly like this like it has been i would say the most stressful year of my life but like i've also like just grown and like learned so much in like a short period of time where like mm-hmm. in high school where i was just kind of like very not anti-social just like i didn't want to talk to people because mm-hmm. like i just didn't think they were worth my time in the span of like four months i went from like First girl I ever want to ask out, asked her out, went good, blah, blah, blah. Like, all these things I, like, learned how to do, like, learned how to deal with all this bullshit going on, just mm-hmm. everything. And that's made me a better person, so. Well, and, and I guess that's the that's the growth part of it, mm-hmm. right? Like, and, and you can probably, when you started Entertain Facts, or when you started your first video to mm-hmm. when Entertain Facts eventually, like, when, when it mm-hmm. was gone, and you take that, you take a look at those years in between, mm-hmm. and that's kind of been, like, your consistent thing. Because mm-hmm. even with this, um... Since Spider-Man: Homecoming, I guess I had, got, I was I was engaged already. Mm-hmm. I'd gotten that rental property, which was a nightmare for me. Mm-hmm. Now it's better; it's just there, um, but it's not a nightmare. And then, all of a sudden, it's like I'm gearing up to get married, and real estate's getting even worse. I had a good year f- mm-hmm. before that, but then after it was just like tanking and stuff. But when I look at the last couple of years, especially now, where me last year, or sorry me let's say the beginning of august last year Mm -hmm. and me now is so different in every single way Mm -hmm. out of real estate don't have the financial woes i wait i make way less money than i was i did at the height of it Mm -hmm. but i wasn't making consistent money at the height Mm -hmm. of it so and making more money right well real estate still fucking sucks so you're good you're good to leave yeah but I was able to pull my shit together. Like mm-hmm. we're talking, Soph and I are, are almost minimalists in what we do and what we spend mm-hmm. and everything. But we've been able to get our shit together all the while through all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Plus, you know, the funerals, plus all of the, mm-hmm. everything like that. Um, which again, t- it's hard using those as examples because mm-hmm. the one funeral I was kind of, it wasn't. It didn't happen directly to me, but the mm-hmm. second one did. But they were yeah. so close; mm-hmm. like they were the closest funerals I've had to deal with. But anyways, plus the wedding, mm-hmm. plus all of that other stuff, and yeah, it's like just like you said. You look back at it, and you're like, it's the one consistent thing, mm-hmm. at least from the that time period. And so for you, you got four years with Entertain Facts being that. Mm-hmm. No matter what happens, that's what you had every day. It's also funny too because within. No, it was a one, one week after that happening, I lost my job I had for eight years. Oh, shit, yeah. yeah. So it's like everything was just for coming. eight years, mm-hmm. hey? Yeah. Holy fuck. Mm-hmm. Well, it was family, like, again, for context, yeah. family owned. I wasn't just like a fucking illegal child worker, but yeah. No, no, no. But then a transition when mm-hmm. Tino took over anyways. Yeah. So, I still have that episode with Tino. I was going to say, I, th- I thought about that like a week ago. <laughs> no, I, it was after our podcast last week because we were like, kind of touching on some topics and yeah. I just kind of thought about that. Like that, it's good we didn't release it. That was so funny. It was still a good one, but the thing is, you and I got into uh, well, argument. Well, it was good because, like, for the, I didn't, I didn't care about the argument, but like, I did back myself into a corner with a tipping thing, where like <laughs> I knew afterwards. I'm like, because like, relatively speaking, like, I actually do tip like quite a bit when I go out. Not like, but I tip when I go out. Like, a- ever since after that, I've like done it. <laughs> and even when I did say it, I'm like, this isn't, this isn't what I'm trying to say. It's just like I was yeah. saying, like, I just don't usually go out, and that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, yeah. But I yeah. said it, and I backed myself into the corner where I refused to admit I was in the wrong. Yeah. So I just kind of like took it. Well, I've been working on this thing now. Uh, it was in the chapter of Peterson's book, and it's um, one of them is be precise in your speech, mm-hmm. and the other one is always tell the truth, if uh, or if not, l- don't lie. That's mm-hmm. the next chapter after. So then I've been really focusing on on that. Like essentially, both of those things are don't say things that make you weak, mm-hmm. and if that means that you don't have to say it, like I've been saying less things mm-hmm. in my day to day than I have before. Because I found there's so many things that I say that actually make me weak. And I've done it on this podcast before because mm-hmm. 
you know, me as a as as one of the guys talking, as one of the co-hosts, there's been times where I've said things where I'm like, I think I said like the Lion King thing. Mm hmm. I don't when I look back at that clip I'm like I don't watch the Lion King that many times I maybe watch it 3 times a year but I think I said I watch it like 10 times a year just to f- prove that I know it very well <laughs> and it was just like which made for a hilarious clip but it weakened me big time and I'm pretty sure anybody that listened to it was probably like this guy's a fucking psycho like I can't listen to this anymore That was still the funniest episode I like so edited. funny but it was it was so funny but it was embarrassing cuz I'm like I made myself look super weak there What did I want to slap it like, will I write? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I didn't say... Well, I think I changed the... Did, I, did we change it to a slap bet? No, it was a slap at first, and you said you'd do it, and you just said you just didn't do no, it. No, no, no. I think it was the I'm standing up in the theater saying you're the smartest No, person. it was first, because I remember you said, if this happens... Like, it was a slap at first. I remember this. You, I remember the you were like very violent with your description of how you're going to slap violent. the fuck out of me. I was super bad. I and was terrible. It was like a, the week after... It was like okay, I'll just like stand up because it was the Jake Peralta thing. Like you are the like greatest detective yes. slash whatever. Yes, slash mm-hmm. genius. Did you want to slap me now? No, I don't care. Are you sure? I would not. I cannot slap someone. No. No. Is it because of mechanical like like your actual the mechanics of it? You can't. I just have to get feel... really like fucking angry to actually like invoke any violence on someone. Mm. Like naturally, it's weird because like no one would expect this, but I'm a very silent guy usually. Like. Just it's at true. home, like people don't really know, like they don't notice where I am because I'm just like there. I'm just sitting. Nobody silent. notices well, it's me. It's fine because they don't bother me. And I don't bother them. So it's like a nice trade off. But like lots of people, like if I don't want to talk to someone, or if I have nothing to say, I'll just sit there silently. And they're like, "What's wrong with you, man? Like, why don't you talk?" I'm like, "I just don't fucking talk much." That's a hard. That's a smart and typical thing to deal mm-hmm. with because, from a person that wants to engage with other people, mm-hmm. it's actually a really good technique to do because if someone's BSing Mm -hmm. because I know I've been trying to BS and someone did this to me and then I've done it to other people. If you don't speak Mm -hmm. while they're trying to explain something, they'll keep or they're while they're trying to lie or BS Mm -hmm. you, they'll keep digging themselves deeper and deeper into their lie because Mm -hmm. you're not reacting the way that they think. It's super funny. I might have to do that, but that's that's the thing because everyone like exactly like we're both like public speakers. Like people think like. For a pre- I won a presentation award for business because of how like, good of a speaker I was. I'm a terrible speaker. I'm no. a terrible public speaker. Remember my wedding? I, I screwed up my speech well, so a, bad. Well, you got to think of circumstance wise, like circumstance yeah, for a wedding. Yeah, but Soph went up there and she crushed. By it's like the opposite effect of MC. Oh, I think your does your wife public speak like at all or no? She okay. did her engagement, but she wrote stuff down. My mistake was I never wrote anything down. But in front of people, I mm-hmm. froze. Then I cried a bunch because I'm a big baby. And then I kept having to sit down. Luckily, people thought that was a joke. Mm. But even at Nick's wedding, when I did the speech to the groom, mm-hmm. I screwed up. And people thought that it was part of it, luckily, because I was able to save it. But I still screwed up, and I had written it down. Mm. I'm just not good at talking to live people. I think that's my weakness because I don't have a lot of practice with it. For me, I just think the biggest reason I like well, I consider myself like a good public speaker is that I will like pick on people in the audience. Mm. like Even at Mosaic... Like, I want, like, nothing, like, mean, like, where it's sure. actually, like, but, like, just funny stuff. Like, the one guy who was dancing, like, I said, like, thank you so much. Like, I think you're actually better than people on stage and just shit like that. Where it's just, well, like, that's good. You're engaging with an mm-hmm. individual. Um, one of the lectures I was listening to, uh, well, it was, it was Peterson himself. He's like, when I talk, first of all, when I do my lectures, mm-hmm. I don't talk to people like I already have the answers for things. Mm-hmm. I have ideas for things, and I... I try to work them out on stage with the audience. But what I do is I actually connect with an individual every single time. Mm-hmm. And you can see it if you watch his videos. When he talks to people mm-hmm. or when he's talking to a large group of people, it always looks like he's talking to one person specifically at a time. And it's super weird, but it's impressive. And he can do like two and a half hour lectures mm-hmm. with no nothing in front of him. He just goes. Yeah, that's crazy. It's amazing. My dad could do that too. Like all the stuff, every speech he's ever had, mm-hmm. I think he's only written two of them one was for my wedding and the other one was from like somebody's 50th anniversary or something like that like um one of the mm-hmm. people that work at the church but i know you just come up with shit out of nowhere for it's presentations amazing. i never like have anything written down i'll just have the jot points on the back yeah. i'll look at it and i'll just bs it and my like, group like always hates it because they're like well should we write a script and i'm like i'm not gonna write a script but like if you need it do it because i'm not gonna fucking like there's been times i have to say someone and it was a bad time too because we had an english project and my teacher like, the teacher that, like, labeled me a white supremacist, like, this same teacher, gave teacher. me props because I, like, our group fucked up so, because they didn't want to write a scre- our spe- our script, mm-hmm. and I just kept, every time they'd fuck up something, I would, like, change it, like, immediately, and I, like, yeah. save them and pull it out of it, like, so much so that, like, 
I think we got a seventy percent, and it was easily like a fucking failing project. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, it's just shit like that. I'm just people always tell me I'm just naturally like witty, and they always you always like have something to say. Like I remember like people try roasting me or something, and like the thing I think about the most is I'm always just thinking to myself because I'm always silent. I'm always just like thinking to myself, just like trying to make myself just entertained mostly. Mm. So if someone comes up to me. I'm always I'm already in the fucking thought process and my thoughts are like mean. Like I'm a mean guy. Like Ari Gold, I resonate with him so much just because there's some times where like I go off on people. Like I remember Stelio. Stelio's the biggest guy and the mo- most mean too, and I hate it because it's kinda like He's taller than you now. Oh, well, you know, it doesn't matter. He, once, I he wanna, starts, once he starts learning how to use his weight, because mm-hmm. I think he's still trying to figure out mm-hmm. how to like he that kid's grew mm-hmm. yeah, fucking fast. Mm-hmm. And so like I think his he hasn't figured out how to use his body. It was funny because we were at um we were at the hospital. His his aunt recent or his grandmother yeah. recently passed away. Um, well, Soph's aunt too. Mm-hmm. But him and his dad were in the room at the mm-hmm. hospital room, and they looked like two inflatable arm flailing tube men just bumping into each other because they're just like their arms are down. Mm-hmm. And even his dad sometimes looks like he doesn't know how to use his arms, mm-hmm. even though he's been like six foot three or something forever. Mm-hmm. But it's just funny watching them like bob around into each other, like these two poles just like fighting around. It's really funny. I feel bad. But He's going to bonk you one day. He uh, he deserves a lot of these fucking angers. Not all of them. There are yeah. some unwarranted. But I remember in Saskatoon, like for our, like Greek dance trip, I, this was, I was there. This was after. This was after our talk in the hallway. I come back and I think Theo called me Thunder Tits or something. And I was super <laughs> drunk. So I'm like, Thunder Tits. So I'm like, okay. Because they're all, the whole group, the whole boy group were in our, like, my room. I'm like, okay, yeah. guys, I'm going to go shower. I'll be five minutes. And when I come out, I'm going to beat all your asses. I'm like, haha, funny. I come out. Just start fucking wailing on Theo. Still comes up. I suplex him on the bed. And they're playing Cards Against Humanity. And they just bought this. They just bought the game. Like, Petro just bought the game. The you box is on my bed. Suplex him right onto the box. Oh, uh, <laughs> I felt so bad. Did you buy him another one? And I offered. It was just like, it wasn't like destroyed. It was just kind of like one of the things. Oh, okay. So mm-hmm. you didn't wreck the whole Yeah, thing. no. You just wrecked their experience. I guess so. It was pretty fun. I stand by it. Gotta be careful. What do you say? We want to wrap this up? I think so. What are we going to call this one? Godfather's think, History of F. F? History of F? I think that's what like you said that? last week. Or do you like Godfathers of F? No, History of F. I think History just sounds nicer. Yeah. History of the F word or just History of F? Hmm. I think F word is more natural. Like to say History, history of, of the F word than History of F. No, actually, let's go History of F because it also is entertained facts. Okay. I think that's the well, big thing. Ties that's in the big takeaway. Things. Either way, like the big takeaway is the fact that like, first of all, you just got to keep going at it. And second of all, you can go from zero to 78,000, 78,900. And uh, just make sure that you don't get uh, copywritten. Your ass is closed. Yeah, no. Oh, um, yeah. Well, he's a Canadian. I'm I'm one away. One away from getting the lead. Of I got to wait. That's why. This is one meme. It's of uh, Ryan from The Office with his notebook. Mm-hmm. Just writing oh, I saw down. that one. No, I, I didn't put it as a different one. But it's one oh. like, uh, like, you know, why, why do they have school shooter drills? Like, the school shoot, like, what do the school shooters, like, do in these drills? And it just has a photo of Ryan taking notes. Oh, shit. And sure. I don't think it's bad, but it's just one of those things where, like, you know what? Like, I'm just not going to post it. It was another meme page. That had said that, or maybe it was yours, but it was something. It, it actually well, it was wasn't like, a meme. It was just that scene where he's like, "I'm writing down the names of anybody that wrong." Well, yeah, me. it was like, and then they get left on red. I posted it. Okay, that was the one. Mm-hmm. Well, I stole it from someone else, but you know, I, yeah. I posted it on my page. Well, this is, uh, I guess, your little history of entertained facts. Where the word EF, where F came from, mm-hmm. and uh, just some. Yeah, I guess it ended up bleeding into just like a almost meeting with the people listening about the mm-hmm. F word. And shit that we could do. Thanks for doing this finally. No, it was nice. Yeah. It's fun, hey? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not respond. My That's ass okay. is so sore. It's okay. We'll get it. Well, you'll be all right. Just going to stand up and walk around for a bit. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all mm-hmm. for this episode. Thanks, everybody, for listening. You can find The Lazy Canadian at the.lazy.canadian mm-hmm. on Instagram where he posts all his memes and stuff. Um Obviously, you guys know where you can find me. You can find me on Twitter at the F words G. Email us at the F word podcast at gmail.com. Don't forget, if you've got reviews on anything that you've seen, heard, or played, or any of the other things in between, you can email us your review at the F word podcast at gmail.com. And uh, thank you for everybody who, wherever you're listening from, whether it's Anchor, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, Castbox. Overcast, Pocket Cast, Podbean, Radio Public, YouTube, or you found us on the Sask Podcast Network website. 
Thanks so much. And if you are able to leave us a like or a review or anything like that, it'd be very much appreciated. Mm -hmm. If in fact you do like it, if you don't, again, you can email us and let us know your grievances. Um, I think that's it. Make sure you're following Entertain Facts. No, keep saying that. Make sure you're following the F word on Facebook and on Instagram for whatever we decide to post. And Mm -hmm. we got more clips coming your way. Mm -hmm. Thanks again for doing this, dude. No problem. And remember, EF is for fun. Uh, EF is for fun. I'm G, that was Anthony, and we are out.